Charlie through. And I hope everybody has managed to log in by now. I'm going to start with Honorable Premier Mbombel. Honorable Premier. Can you please check what's happening? Honorable Deputy Speaker. Honorable Chair of Chairs. I'm present, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable. I am present, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Deputy Speaker. I am present, uh, Honorable uh, Speaker, and good Thank morning, you. everybody. Honorable NEC, morning, morning. Honorable NEC Brown. Good morning, Speaker, present. Thank you. Honorable NEC Bulan. Speaker, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable MC Mohal. Good morning, Honorable Speaker. I'm present. Thank you. Honorable MC Mahas. Good morning, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members. I'm present, Speaker. Morning. Honorable MC Tew. Good morning. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I am present. Thank you. Honorable MC Mashenin. Good morning, Speaker, Honorable Members, I am present. Okay. Um, honorable MC Koloi. Morning, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, Speaker, I am present. Thank you. Honorable MC Kabat. Uh, Good Speaker. And morning, all the members are in present speaker. Thank you. Morning. Uh, Honorable H. Smith. Uh, good morning, Honorable Member, uh, Honorable Speaker. I hope you had a nice evening and I'm present. Morning. Honorable Khadebe. I'm in a meeting, Speaker. Good morning. Morning, honorable Thank members. Morning, <laughs> honorable Meko. Speaker, I'm present. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Honorable Jankerson. Good morning, honorable Madam Speaker. Good morning. Thank you. Honorable Van Furen. Morning, Speaker. I'm present. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Fanfiren. Honorable Chachau. I'm present. Thank you. Honorable Cleaners. Good morning, Speaker. Good morning, Members. I'm present. Morning. Thank you. Honorable Lituka. Uh, good morning, Speaker. And Good members, morning. I am present. Thank you. Honorable Peter Way. Morning, Speaker. Morning, members. I'm present. Thank you. Honorable Mackerson. Morning, Speaker. Today. Morning. Thank you. Honorable Majake. Good morning, uh, Honorable Speaker. I'm here. Morning. Thank you. Can you please answer this one? Honorable Nanyan. Honorable Nanyan. Uh, she's not she's not present here, uh, Honorable Speaker. It's not present. Uh, yeah, the carrier of apologies. It should be somewhere administratively we have processed it. Sorry. Honorable um, Simana. Okay. 
Honorable Simon. Okay. Honorable uh, Smith. G. Uh, good morning, Speaker. I'm, I'm present. And do we have any NCOP permanent delegates with us, Honorable Member? Thank you. Uh, Honourable members, uh, welcome. Um, as we proceed with the House proceedings today, but before we proceed, Honourable members, I wish to request the House to suspend the following rules. Rule 25-2A, to allow the, the, the House to proceed at 9 a.m. today. And also Rule 144, to allow the House to conclude on the two stages of the bill when we consider the appropriation bill before 2020. Any objection? None. 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 Thank you. None. Approved. Thank you, Honorable Members. We now proceed to motions uh, according to Rule 61 to 63 of our standing rule and orders of the House. In the second reading debate on votes of appropriation bill, Rule 170. Honorable Members, now we proceed to motions. The Secretary shall read motion one. That the second reading debate on the appropriation bill number 420 is continued in vote four. Thank you for the Thank you. Honorable members, the vote before the House is vote four. Free State Provincial Treasury. The Honorable MEC Brown may address the House. What in Tabafazi? Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier of the Free State Province, members of the Executive Council, members of the Free State Legislature, Director General of the Province, Heads of Department of Respective Departments, Ladies and Gentlemen, Free Staters. Madam Speaker, I have extensively addressed the macroeconomic conditions and forecasts in the provincial budget speech on the 7th of July 2020. Allow me to reiterate that the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the provincial economy is expected to be severe. It is also expected to have a detrimental effect on our endeavours to fight poverty, unemployment and inequality. I've also indicated that the fiscal landscape has drastically changed that there is no better time than this for us to institutionalize and concretize the principles of transparency, accountability, responsibility, efficiency and effectiveness in the utilization of limited public resources at our disposal. Honorable Speaker, the oversight role of provincial treasury is key to ensuring that public resources are managed prudently with integrity. Honorable Speaker, our vision for the next five years is to be an innovative and resilient partner in prudent, prudent financial management, socio-economic growth and service delivery. Our focus will be on improving fiscal sustainability and financial accountability in provincial departments, public entities and municipalities. This budget vote speech aims to provide a broad overview of our performance during the previous financial year and outlines the department's priorities and programs for the 2021 financial year. Provincial Treasury has appropriated 535.666 million, which has been allocated as follows. Program one, administration. The role of this program is to provide leadership and strategic management in accordance with legislation, regulations, and policies, as well as to ensure that there are appropriate support services to all programs. The program is allocated an amount of 111.755 million. The main cost drivers in this program are centralized support services such as IT services, 
photocopying, and the audit, Auditor General's fees. Program two, Sustainable Resource Management. Honorable Speaker, the role of our Sustainable Resource Management Program is to provide professional advice and support on provincial economic analysis, fiscal policy, and the management of the annual budget process, as well as the implementation of the provincial budget. In the 2021 financial year, this program is allocated a total budget of 55.958 million. The program consists of five directorates, namely economic analysis, fiscal policy, budget management, public finance, and financial asset management and compensation. Economic analysis, honorable speaker, this sub program is at the forefront of economic research in the provincial government. In collaboration with DESTIA, the Department of Economic, Small Business Development, Tourism and Environmental Affairs, the Office of the Premier, the Free State Development Corporation, the Department of Education, Agriculture and, Human, Agriculture and Rural Development, Human Settlements, COCTA and Institutions of Higher Learning, the Provincial Treasury successfully hosted the fourth annual Free State Provincial Research Colloquium on the 18th and the 19th of September 2019 at the Central University of Technology. More than 200 delegates attended the colloquium over two days. Honorable Premier and Honorable Speaker, in light of the difficulties posed by COVID-19, the expected budget cuts for 2021 financial year and social distance protocols, I regret to inform the House that the annual Free State Provincial Research Colloquium will not be held during the current financial year. However, the department will continue to conduct provincial research in order to ensure that the provincial fiscal framework, as well as allocations to departments and entities, are evidence-based. Three research papers are expected to be completed by the end of the financial year. As I indicated last year, the department initiated a gender-responsive budgeting pilot project with a view to ensure that our fiscal allocations are informed by gender response planning and budget framework. Honorable Speaker, this project is undertaken in a phased-in approach and will continue during this financial year. Honorable Speaker, the Provincial Treasury, together with the departments of COCTA, DESTIA, Office of the Premier, will continue to assist respective municipalities with the development of local economic development. As this program is intended to optimize the economic potential of all municipalities and to enhance the resilience of the macroeconomic growth through increased local economic growth. Employment creation and development initiatives within the context of sustainable development. The program will further continue to publish the Provincial Economic Review and Outlook, which is called the PIRO, and the Municipal Economic Review and Outlook, MIRO. These documents will form part of the tabling of the 21-22 provincial budget in March 2021. Provincial owned revenue. Honorable Speaker, the pre-audited figures for the 2019-20 financial year shows that the province collected 1.217 billion in revenue. This translates to a revenue collection rate of 97.6% against the budget of 1.248 billion. Madam Speaker, I must indicate that the revenue figures may change as most of the departments were unable to capture all revenue receipts towards the end of the 1920 financial year as a result of our national lockdown regulations. We are anticipating that these numbers may rise when we finalize the audit of the 1920 financial year. Provincial Treasury provides financial support to revenue generating provincial departments to ensure that owned revenue projects are funded to enhance service and earn investment. During the 1920 financial year, three departments were funded through the revenue enhancement allocation, namely the Department of Police, Roads and Transport for the upgrade of testing stations, public works and infrastructure for the maintenance of upgrade and rental property, and the Department of Health for the services of the case managers at hospitals. An amount of 20.318 million was allocated to these three departments, an expenditure of 17.4 million was recorded. The province will continue to invest in projects that have the potential to enhance provincial owned revenue. 
Madam Speaker, we wish to reiterate that own revenue remains an integral part and source of our revenue for this province, especially in the absence of additional revenue allocation from national government in the form of equitable share. We are, however, not oblivious to the detrimental effect of the lockdown on the provincial economy. And we therefore request all revenue collecting departments to thoroughly assess their respective estimated revenue budgets for the current financial year with a view to come up with strategies and measures to overcome those challenges. Honorable Speaker, the challenging economic conditions in our country suggest that the province may not be able to attain anticipated revenue targets at the end of the year. However, Provincial Treasury, in, collabor in collaboration with all provincial departments, will continue to firmly monitor revenue collection until a normal adjustment budget, wherein the proposed downward revision will be implemented in the event that the current situation remains unchanged. Under Budget Management, Honourable Speaker, the implementation of a provincial budget is guided by the provincial budget process, which is a consultative process that involves all key departments and entities. All the planned budget process stages were achieved and envisaged. The 2021 budget was initially tabled on the 5th of March in 2020, however, due to unforeseeable circumstances which led to COVID-19, we had to withdraw the budget and table a revised budget to make provision for COVID-19 related measures. I must indicate, Honourable Speaker, that this was a very consultative budgeted process. Honourable Speaker, in the 2021 financial year, we plan to continue to strengthen our oversight role with regard to effective implementation of budgets in line with government priorities, as well as to ensure that the cost containment measures are strengthened to eliminate unnecessary spending. We will strengthen our focus on the implementation of infrastructure projects and spending there on collaboration with our sister department of public works and infrastructure. Under public finance and financial assets management, Honourable Speaker, according to the pre-audited figures, the province spent 99% of our budget at the end of the 1920 financial year. I'm pleased to announce to the House that we were successful in working with the Department of Education to contain perpetual overexpenditure. The Department of Education recorded an expenditure of 99.7% as at the end of the 1920 financial year, after overspending its budget in the two previous financial years. Honourable Speaker, we are not oblivious to the fact that there is still enormous work that must be done to ensure financial health in this department and a few other departments as well. Madam Speaker, I'm also grateful to announce to this August House that the Provincial Revenue Fund has obtained a clean audit report during the 1920 financial year. However, I must indicate that the province, we should work even harder in ensuring that we enhance our liquidity and subsequently build much required reserves. The Provincial Treasury, in partnership with National Treasury, has successfully conducted a workshop in Bloemfontein on the introduction of the framework for infrastructure delivery and procurement management on the 5th and 6th of August 2019. All three state provincial departments attended the FIDPM workshop on the invitation of provincial treasury. Madam Speaker, in 2021, we are planning to streamline our infrastructure investment and focus on fewer projects that can yield a bigger impact on service delivery and on the economy of the province at large. We must also strengthen our oversight role in the implementation of infrastructure projects if we want to change the economic landscape of our province. Honourable Speaker, as we are, uh, are appearing before the respective committees of this August House, we are humbled by the discussions of the members that also underscores the issue of enhancing an oversight role, mainly on infrastructure. On the provincial wage bill, Honourable Speaker, government is mindful that the growing wage bill is a thorny issue and is pushing financial capability to the precipice of fiscal indebtedness. Hence, we need to take tough and life-saving decisions. In this context, the provincial government is committed to ensure proper plans for sufficient budget to, fu to fund new appointments, compel departments to adhere to approved organisation design and alignment with the enacted organogram by DPSA. Reduce the out of adjustment expenditure, minimize the number of contract posts, enforce adequate regulatory oversight on the, on the appointment of the parasol system, 
and improve adherence to the adopted stringent cross containment measures aimed at efficiency savings on non core items spending across all provincial departments. Program three asset and liability management. Honorable Speaker, the Asset and Liability Management Program is responsible for providing policy direction, facilitating the effective and efficient management of assets, liabilities, and financial management system, and procure transversal and cross-cutting goods and services. This program is allocated 287.889 million. Honorable Speaker, when the Executive Council decided to centralize the procurement of, of PPEs on behalf of the province in Provincial Treasury, this program that is responsible for cross-cutting goods and services was provided with this mammoth task. Hence, the significant increase in the budget of this program compared to the previous financial years. Allow me to commend the officials in this program, together with the Departmental Supply Chain Management Unit, for the sterling work that they have done thus far. As I outlined in the provincial budget speech, the majority of the procurement spend was spent on black-owned enterprises and free state-based companies. Honorable Speaker, the Executive Council, under the leadership of Her Excellency Premier Sisi Ntombela, has taken a decision to decentralize the procurement of COVID-19 related commodities back to the departments as at the 15th of July, 2020. Provincial Treasury will be handing over a database of suppliers whose commodities went through and passed rigorous compliance and quality tests which the accounting officers may utilize for the procurement of COVID-19 related commodities. The decentralization will ensure that departments and sector specific COVID-19 needs are properly attended to and that it's a collective as we respond appropriately to this pandemic. Honorable Speaker, while emergency procurement was a difficult exercise given and the fact that the demand for COVID-19 commodities exceeded the supply, we have done our part in ensuring that we procure from all districts in the province. We will, however, continue to work with Testia to make sure that we increase the pool of potential suppliers to goods and services required by the provincial government, and also ensuring that the provincial government leverages on government procurement in supporting various sectors of our provincial economy as well as various districts. We will continue to support and monitor the departments in, in ensuring that the sound supply chain management practices are observed when procuring in response to COVID-19 and that government resources reaches all districts and designated groups. On the central supply database, Honorable Speaker, it is essential that free state service providers be registered on the central supply database in order for them to be considered when goods and services are procured. It has therefore been a priority for the department to support potential suppliers with online registration and amendments on the central supply database. Roadshows are conducted annually to ensure that potential suppliers throughout the province are reached. However, for this financial year, no roadshows will be conducted due to COVID-19. We also encourage suppliers to update their CSD information and indicate the designated group that they belong to. Madam Speaker, to further support fairness in procurement, we will continue to enforce rotation systems through the Free State Supplier Management System. This system is synchronized with the CSD and reduces human element the human element effect on choosing suppliers for quotations, but rather provide equal opportunities to quote for all the suppliers that are registered on that particular commodity. Payment of suppliers within 30 days. Madam Speaker, the payment of suppliers within the stipulated 30 days remain a concern for the province. As part of our oversight and monitoring role, Provincial Treasury monitors and assesses 30-day payments by departments and entities on a monthly basis. Suppliers are given the opportunity to report late or non-payment to the Provincial Treasury, who then assists to ensure that suppliers are paid accordingly. On capacity building to youth, women and people who are living with disability, one of the priorities of this program is to ensure that capacity is built in departments and entities. During the past year, we conducted in-house training for SEM practitioners, facilitated generic training for SEM practitioners with accredited service providers. 
conducted ACM forums to provide a platform for sharing of best practices and information. Honourable Speaker, I'm not only passionate about development and education of youth, but also about women empowerment through business and various development programs, which focus on skills transfer and capacity building to reinforce the culture of self-sustainability through self-employment and mentoring of the aspiring and established entrepreneurs who are faced with business stagnation challenges. To this end, various financial services entities have expressed their interest in partnering with the provincial treasury in making the youth, women, and people with disability financial liberation management program a reality. Speaker, the internship program of provincial treasury has been one of the critical development programs that has constantly and consistently become a fee to departments and municipalities. We are currently employing eight interns that are due to finalize their program in, the 21, in 2021, but we will also have further intake of not less than 20 youth and will start post lockdown. Honorable Premier, Honorable Speaker, the Provincial Treasury has a relationship with Visa Makate Centre of Excellence and visits the centre annually during the 16 days of activism against women and children abuse to offer support to female offenders and the youth. The department officials donate toiletries, computers, clothing, and demonstrates to the offenders that they can be rehabilitated and they are still needed in our communities. Supply chain management reforms, Madam Speaker, Cabinet has approved the publication of the Public Procurement Bill for public comment, which is setting in motion legislation for procurement strategies that govern socio-economic objectives. Procurement is a critical function of government and must be noted that government is the largest procuring single institute in the province. The Free State Government uses large share of its fiscus for procurement of goods, services and infrastructural needs, thus contributing immensely to the economy of the Free State Province. It is important the very same procurement must assist with government to achieve some of the developmental goals through large procurement designated groups. All departments must ensure that they fully utilise the provisions of the preferential procurement regulations of 2017. It provides added advantage to designated groups in small, medium and micro enterprises, SMMEs, also classified as EMEs, QSEs in the BEEE Act and the Codes of Good Practice. Program 4, Financial Governance. The role of this program is to promote accountability through substantive reflect, reflection of financial activities of the province, as well as compliance with financial norms and standards. The program is allocated 30.069 million. Audit outcomes, provincial departments and entities. Madam Speaker, if we are to look at the audit outcome trends of the free state provincial government departments, it is evident that there was slight improvement in the audit outcomes of the 1819 financial year. Two of these departments disclaimed in the 1718, which were cleared in the 1819 financial year, leaving only one department being disclaimed in the 1819 financial year. The department has supporting departments through one-on-one -on -one meetings on remedial action plans and performing preliminary reviews of the annual financial statements to enable departments to correct findings before the statements are submitted for auditing. The department has also hosted sessions with the AGSA and National Treasury where they present complex issues to the departments. We are confident that in the 1920 audit outcomes will reflect a further improvement. On irregular expenditure, Madam Speaker, we continued the 1920 with the intervention project for the investigation of irregular expenditure incurred in previous years in an effort to ensure that the province reduces its cumulative irregular expenditure. The project started with investigations in the following departments and entities. The Department of Health, Education, Agriculture and Rural Development, Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, Human Settlements and Free State Gambling, Liquor and Tourism Authority. The service provider finalized 3,566 cases to the value of 11.4 billion. 
since March 2019 to the end of March 2020. For these departments and entities, we provided them with relevant information to complete the process. For 2,115 cases to the value of 4.1 billion, no limitation or losses were identified and can therefore be submitted with a submission to the relevant authority for consideration of it to be condoned. 307 cases amounting to 119 million have to be removed from the regular expenditure reporting and registers as it does not define the definition of irregular expenditure. The project also aims to build capacity and 235 attendance certificates were issued to officials that were attending training sessions at the PwC Business School. To enhance the existing internal controls, the root causes for transgressions were determined through these investigations and remedial controls recommended to prevent further irregular expenditure. The project will continue during this financial year. The contract is for a period of two years, ending in March 2021. It makes provision for additional irregular expenditure cases of other departments and entities to be added to the project. On provincial risk management and internal audit, Honourable Speaker, it is our pursuit to improve good governance. Uh, we hosted a number of anti-fraud and fraud awareness uh, activities during this past financial year. These include four district anti-fraud awareness sessions in all four districts, which were attended by a total number of 259 delegates from provincial departments, public entities and municipalities. The focus was on officials in middle and senior management level. Attendees acquire technical knowledge on the underlying principles of organizational ethics, organizational fraud risk management, which enabled them to enhance organizational, organizational fraud strategic documents in order to improve the existing internal control environment. The department also hosted an International Anti-Corruption Day session on the 9th of December 2019, which was attended by 260 delegates. The focus was on strategic level and the session was attended by members of the legislature, mayors and members of mayoral committees on finance, accounting officers, municipal managers, chief financial officers, chief audit executives and chief risk officers amongst others. Knowledge was shared by these presenters on the trends of fraud and, fraud and corruption and strategies on how attendance would be implemented to deter fraudulent activities and minimize the cost of investigations. The department hosted various forums, such as Risk Management Forum, the Chief Audit Executive Forum, and the Audit Committee Forum to build capacity and share knowledge and experience. The department will continue to assess departments and entities in terms of compliance with risk management legislation, and fraud risk assessments will also be assessed um, and also assist assessments in compliance with internal audit legislation. Combating corruption. Honourable Speaker, we are collaborating our efforts with all Chapter 9 institutions in combating corruption in the province. We believe that this collaboration will yield better results than we work in silos. We will continue to strengthen our relationships with the Office of the Premier, the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, encourage and support our officials to register and qualify as certified fraud examiners. Honourable Speaker, CFE is accepted worldwide as the standard of excellence in the anti-fraud profession. We will further call on a request for proposal for prospective professional service providers to form part of our panel of professionals that will support the province with investigations and forensic investigations. We call upon the members of the community to report any fraudulent activities that they may present themselves in government through the presidential hotline. Last program, Honourable Speaker, the Municipal Finance Management. The role of this program is to promote and improve the state of financial governance and management at a local government level. This program is allocated 49.995 million. The Municipal Finance Management Program provides oversight, technical support and guidance to assist municipalities in managing their financial resources prudently and sustainability. The program is designed in line with district model format in order to respond to the municipal needs and provide dedicated support in this particular in a particular district. The model of operation is also geared to maximize the benefits of specialization areas such as asset accounting, budget and supply chain management. 
This program will see additional branches from the 2021 MTF onwards with the establishment of dedicated supply chain and municipal finance recovery services sub programs to cater for municipalities' needs and other demands. Given that the municipal finance recovery service is a national function, funds have already been allocated by National Treasury and thank you, therefore, for the establishment of such units in provinces. On the recovery services, we have commenced with monitoring municipal interventions. The MFM unit is already supporting Section 139 interventions at Mangaon Metro, Maluti Apufum Local Municipality and Mafube Local Municipality. I'm pleased to announce to this House that the intervention of Mangaon Metro is a case study for National Treasury. The progress thus far at Mangaun Metro has afforded us many learning opportunities in terms of the efficacy of interventions. Together with our partner Salga and supply chain management, we focused initially on ca capacitation of impacts to reduce unauthorized, irregular and fruitless and wasteful expenditure. The unit will also be monitoring pre-implementation of contract management by municipalities commencing initially with contracts over 3 million. SEM-related support will also be provided to municipalities which are found to be in distress with their procurement systems. The support will be provided by deploying hands-on resources at municipalities relating, relating to weaknesses and gaps to implement sustainable SEM reforms. On municipal budgets, this program will continue to focus on enhancing technical support to capacitate delegated municipalities on the preparation of multi-year budgets with the objective of improving the funding position of delegated municipalities' budgets. These ongoing engagements with senior management at municipalities and formalized feedback on budget assessments provided to municipalities are aimed at promoting realistic funding municipal budgets. During the last municipal financial cycle, only six of the 22 municipalities had unfunded budgets and we had to prepare recovery plans. My plea to municipal councils is, not, is to not approve unfunded budgets as this will place severe strain on the country's already dire fiscal position. I must stress that provincial treasury is not in a position to and will not bail out municipalities. The implementation of EMSCO is continuing and more focus will be placed on capacitating delegate, delegated municipalities to improve the quality of data streams on this financial system. We have appointed an advisor um, as well as dedicated EMSCO coordinators in the team to approve this reporting compliance. On municipal accounting and reporting, we continue to provide technical support in financial management to promote financial sustainability and to monitor, compli monitor compliance with annual reporting framework. Honourable Speaker, I am first to acknowledge that I'm not entirely happy with the current audit outcomes of our municipalities. I urge and we will continue to support executive mayors, mayors, accounting officers of municipalities, but we urge them to take ownership and provide leadership on municipal finances to ensure that they continue to build internal capacity um, to ensure that financial processes and quality of reporting are improved ultimately. Service delivery must be improved. We will continue to monitor the implementation of audit action plans and will regularly engage political office bearers through district-based forums. We've also established an MMC for Finance Forum to support political office bearers to effectively perform their monitoring and oversight responsibilities. The internal audit and risk management in the Municipal Finance Management Unit plays a crucial and critical role in the internal audit value chain, risk mitigation strategies and actions. The unit will continue to support municipal internal audits, risk management units and municipalities to improve quality of financial reporting. Honourable Speaker, it is only through strengthening the governance support systems and structures that we will be able to combat corruption in municipalities. We will be resuscitating the Auditors Chairpersons Forum and we will be monitoring the functionality of audit committees. We will also be monitoring the functionality of disciplinary boards at MPACs on unauthorized, irregular and fruitless wasteful expenditure. In, a, in a, my attempt to conclude, Honourable Speaker, the preventative control measures initiated by Provincial Treasury is aimed at providing specialist support to municipalities 
in identifying methods to promote sound financial management and sustainability. The PCM initiatives are focused on building capacities such as SEM and revenue support. This year, the SEM processes and contracts before they appoint service providers in order to avoid unauthorized, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure will be supported. And I appeal to the political and administrative leadership of municipalities to buy into the support initiatives of provincial government through COCTA Treasury to trans and SALGA to transform our municipalities. Together with COCTA, we continue to drive a minimum competency level in financial management at our municipalities in the province. The aim is to equip accounting officers and senior managers, chief financial officers and other finance officials in municipalities to meet the prescribed financial management competency levels and to ultimately reduce the over-reliance on consultants and improve the efficiency and fiscal disciplines and qualitative reporting. In conclusion, Honourable Speaker, this year has shown us the truth of former President Nelson Mandela's wisdom as he said, after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are more hills to climb. Honorable Speaker, our work will never be done as long as the scourge of poverty, unemployment and inequality remains. We are committed to take up the challenges and ensure that financial resources of the province are used effectively and efficiently to service our people and bring about socio-economic transformation to change their lives for the better. Honourable Speaker, I must extend my appreciation to various public and private sector partners for their continued support of the work at Treasury and the support that we received through their various corporate governance and social responsibility programs. As we conclude our budget vote, allow me to acknowledge and appreciate the support of our Honourable Premier, Masisi Ntombela, all my colleagues in the Executive Council for great speeches that they've put together and the presiding officers and members of the Public Accounts and Finance Committee for their support during our annual pro appropriation bill process. I further wish to thank the ruling party for uh, the opportunity to serve the people of this province in this deployment at Provincial Treasury. I wish to thank the Head of Department of Provincial Treasury, Mr. Godfrey Mahlatsi, together with all the senior officials and the officials of this department for their commitment to ensure that Provincial Treasury executes its legis legislative mandate. It's now time to implement. Honorable Speaker, members, ladies and gentlemen, free status, I thank you. Kia leboa. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable MEC. Uh, Honorable members, uh, before I call the next speaker, uh, I, I wish to remind the Honorable members that the debate on the votes of the Premier and the member of the Executive Council responsible for financial matters shall be open debates and shall not be limited to the restrictions imposed by Rule 81 of the Standing Rules and Orders. Honorable members, uh, I therefore call now Honorable Chief Whip Chabalala to speak for 10 minutes. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable members of the Free State Legislature. So, honorable yeah. members, did, honorable members, did you did you hear me? Was I audible? Yes. Yes. Oh, I thought I thought my my, my mic was was mute. Honorable members, I'll call. The Honourable Chief Whip, the Chairperson of, of, of the Committee, to start the debate. Thank you very much. Good morning, Honourable Speaker. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Premier, the members of the Executive, uh, members of the Free State Legislature, receive my sincere and revolutionary greetings. The radical economic transformation is the vehicle 
we will use to better the lives of our people. I want to repeat, Honorable Speaker, that the radical economic transformation is the vehicle we will use to better the lives of our people. The ANC government has always displayed superior understanding of the challenges faced by our people, and the ANC has since from 1994 established policies which are putting the interest of the greater majority first. The radical economic transformation is one of those policies. Honorable Speaker, after the transition to a fully democratic order in 1994, the adoption of the new constitution of the Republic of South Africa in 1996 prompted the creation and development of decentralized administrative structure consisting of three distinct but interrelated and interdependent spheres of government, your national, your provincial, and your local government. The ANC saw a need for a long-term budget reform initi uh, initiative, which is aimed at realizing the constitutional ideas of efficiency, effectiveness, equity, equity and development orientation. The budget vote is tabled in the midst of an unfavorable economic forecast, globally and nationally. These circumstances are expected to impact negatively on the provincial fiscal space. Furthermore, this table of the provincial treasury occurs when the country is reaching its peak of infection of this pandemic. Madam, Honorable Madam Speaker, the provincial treasury, amongst other things, is expected to implement sound public uh, financial management reforms. Honorable Speaker, the provincial treasury remains central in playing a crucial role in advocating for budget reform process in this uh, sub-national sphere. Indeed, the department should employ prudent financial management and good governance, which is what the free state means. The ANC has great belief that the Honorable MEC Brown is very capable to drive the department to deliver on its vision to provide good financial management and excellent services in the public sector for a better life for the people of the free state. Honorable members, allow me to remind others that the ANC-led government is a government which cares, and that's why it has put in place the social security measures to assist our people. The ANC-led government understands exactly that one third of our people rely heavily on social net. The old age grants, our people rely on the disability grant, our child support grant, etc. The ANC remains a disciplined force of the left. That is why it strives to change the material conditions of our people. The ANC is an, organ <coughs> the ANC is an organization which is accountable. It is in its character to consider all challenges faced by the people of the free state. Honorable MEC, the ANC welcomes the intention by the department to ensure excellence in its planning and execution of uh, in, in this government. That is why we support the budget. Honorable Speaker, it is important to commend the department in its endeavor to make funds available to assist within dealing with COVID-19. We welcome the strides made by the department in its primarily uh, uh, exercise, which yield more than 300 million more. Uh, actually to prepare the province for COVID-19. The principles adopted by the province in order to identify funds which could be uh, reprioritized also uh, is welcome. The National Development Plan is the guiding document of the government and the ANC acknowledged that the provincial treasury budget is underpinned on the 2019, between 2019 to 2024 medium term strategy framework. Honorable Speaker, the Free State Provincial Growth and Development Plan January 8th statement, Cabinet Lekota, Sona, Sopa are crucial and key framework, frame, uh, frameworks to achieve the free state we want. The free state province continue to fund key social priorities such as education, health and social services investment on social economic infrastructure development over the NTEF period with the view to encourage and promote economic growth and create much needed job opportunities should not stop. The province through this department will thus continue to use the available physical space to fight back the challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment and promote good governance. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the department budget has specific cost drives and speech by the Honorable MEC indicate willingness to meet these drivers. 
and end the obvious challenges. It is important that the provincial treasury strengthen the oversight role to safeguard the public fund. We also welcome that the transversal contracts are placed under the control of the provincial treasury and also the ANC encourage the Honorable MEC to intensify and monitor closely the support of two municipalities. The ANC led government will not compromise on service delivery, hence, we urge the department to employ additional resources to improve capacity to the effective deal, deal with fraud. These are great steps in the right direction. The, it, it continues in, uh, the intention by the department to, to manage the provincial and municipal fiscal resources effectively is commendable. The ANC encourages the department to continue facilitating the effective and efficient management of assets and physical system, uh, financial systems. This allows the department to promote accountability and, and, and financial activities and compliance with sound financial norms and standards. The department should never be discouraged by a few objections from the opposition in this regard. The department should continue restoring confidence to our people by doing what is necessary to guard the bodies of the public. The budget of the Department of Treasury is aligned to contribute and build a capable and developmental state and climb to the National Development Plan. The budget is also responsive, accountable, effective, and efficient to the needs of the community of the free state, the black majority in particular. Uh, it can never be overlooked that there is a great intention by the department to empower and include youth in its operations. We welcome the effective, effectiveness financial resources allocated, which gives effect to the policy priorities. Honorable Speaker, we undoubtedly support this budget. In conclusion, the ANC urges the department to provide the much needed support, advice, and guidance to the department and municipalities on revenue and cash management. We also encourage the department to improve the credibility and sustainability thereof, and to monitor the implementation of the budget to enhance accountability, efficiency, and the integrity of the free state government. Uh, Honorable Speaker, allow me, in the wake of uh, the best uh, poet of Nigeria, uh, Ben Ogri, the, the acclaimed Nigerian poet, I want to quote, for we are all richly linked in hope, woven in history like a mountain road. Together we can ascend to a new height, guided by our hearts, clearest light. When perception are changed, there is much to gain. A flowering of truth instead of pain. There is more to a people than their poverty. They, there is their work, wisdom, and creativity. Close quote. Honorable Speaker, indeed working together we can change the perception of many and the, uh, and the free state province will grow sustainably. That is why we want to urge uh, the Honorable MEC that in working together with this committee, we will be ensuring that all the corrupt activities that are happening in the province must be exposed. We are going to work together to ensure that all the departments with irregularities, irregular expenditure, fruitless expenditure, as a committee, we definitely going to ensure that we come out there and do the right thing. Consequence management, Honorable Speaker, must be the order of the day. Those who have done wrong things in the money of the taxpayers must be definitely be exposed in line with our oversight as a committee. That is why we want to encourage good governance. That is why we want to encourage that the financial or the systems, the, 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 the systems are correct in every municipalities. Local empowerment must happen. We want our people to benefit out of the COVID-19 funding that is here. The young people must benefit. We must not give young people the letters to supply. Then tomorrow these people would never do the supply. That is why we are urging young women, young youth out there must be empowered by this department. And we shall never be apologetic. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Chief Whip. Um, I now call Honorable D. Smith to address the House. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, you. South Africa is faced with a mammoth socio-economic disaster. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic reached the shores of our country, 
we will fa face with an economic recession, increasing un unemployment, and huge inequality. Unemployment in the Free State increased before the lockdown with 3.4%. The Free State also reported the most sig significant, significant loss of jobs in the agricultural sector during the first quarter of 2020. The pandemic, consequential lockdown, restrictions, and government's irrational regulations have only worsened the existing crisis. Speaker, for years and years on end, this House and the people of the Free State have to wait for departmental projects to be finalized. We wait for testing stations to be completed. In the meantime, our roads are in a dire state. In some places in the Free State, it's safer to, it's safer to drive next to the road than on it. Speaker, this paralyzes our agricultural sector and puts people's lives at risk. But, Speaker, Honorable MEC Brown managed to identify areas where funds could be reprioritized. The principle that sparked our interest most is the reprioritization by 60% of non-core items, including entertainment, catering, transport and subsistence, and venues and facilities. Why does the Free State only do this in a pandemic? Shouldn't this be the norm, Speaker? Our people are jobless. Our people are hungry. Treasury has the power to put an end to unnecessary luxuries. And the Freedom Front Plus challenges you, on Honorable Brown, to start closing the taps on luxuries when this pandemic is over. Any and all efforts to alleviate the current financial crisis are useless if there is no political will on the part of the ruling party to address and reverse the crisis. Honorable Speaker, the economy will never grow successfully if failed ideologies and policies Take Thank precedent. you, Honourable Dismiss. It will not grow while the state coffers are looted and exploited by corruption. I thank you, Speaker. Um, Honourable MEC Sue, you may address the House. Honourable Speaker. Okay. Yes, thank you, Honourable Speaker, uh, Deputy Speaker, um, Honourable Premier, my colleagues in the Executive, Honourable Members of the Legislature, the Treasury budget vote before this August House today is a significant yet important enabler for the provincial government to be able to carry out its mandate and continue with sound service delivery to its citizens. More so, it is to enable the provincial government to actively respond to most devastating pandemic that befell the world, the world, COVID-19. And our speaker, surely we need resources to fight this invisible enemy that is ravaging and ruining human lives. We definitely need more human capital equipment, hospital beds, drugs, and above all, health education and intensify our means to curb the spread of the virus. Social behavior and non-pharmaceutical protocols and interventions are the most critical aspects of our fight against the virus. These are perceived to be the most affordable and cheaper ways of containing the spread of the virus. We were standing at 18,134 confirmed cases as of 28th July 2020. Obviously, the ultimate and long-lasting solution to the problem will be the discovery of the vaccine. World scientists are hard at work spending sleepless nights to try and find the vaccine against the coronavirus. We remain optimistic that in the near future, we will have cure for the disease and start to live in the world that is coronavirus free. We should not be mistaken to think that we will go back to the old ways of living. We must accept and adapt, and we will be living under the new normal. More resources were allocated to different departments to help them with the fight against COVID-19, and at the same time to continue safeguarding the livelihoods and assist the provincial economy from further plunging into the irrecoverable state of abnormality. Madam Speaker, 
we are indeed in a very difficult situation as the government, having to make difficult economic life decisions and strike the balance. Honorable Speaker. Special... Yes, I can you pause, Honorable MC? Uh, Honorable Jamperson. Honorable Speaker, on a point of order. Um, speaker, we have the MEC of Health sitting here talking and giving speeches in the legislature grandstanding while no, 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 no. Now no, no. let's fell and no, me on strike. 480 open children debate. are dying of hunger in the psychiatric complex and she's Honorable sitting here grandstanding. Honorable Jungensen, that is not a point of order and you are the one who is out of order. The MEC is debating you. Don't tell her what to say in her debate. Continue, Honorable Jungensen. Honorable Jungensen, stop it. Continue, Honorable Jungensen. Honorable Jungensen, Honorable Jungensen, Honorable Jungensen, Honorable Jungensen, Honorable Jungensen, Honorable Jungensen, Honorable Honorable Jungensen, Honorable Jungensen, She should be the, he should be the one dying, I think. We are indeed in a very difficult situation. Honorable MEC, withdraw the point of order, Madam Speaker. Withdraw. Point of order, please. Okay, I withdraw, Speaker. Please withdraw. I withdraw. It's a disgrace. Thank you. Continue, Honorable can MC. You ask, can you ask uh, this one, the Madam to withdraw as well? No, under point of order, equally, that must also be withdrawn. Under point of order, Speaker, may I address you, please? No, you are not going to address me. Continue, Honorable MEC. I oh, have ruled on yeah, point of order. A very difficult order. Continue, yes, Honorable MEC. Honorable Speaker, you can't, you can't you can't refuse to give me a point of order. We've what been, is the point of order, Honorable Chaka? Honorable Member, honor, Honorable M, Honorable Speaker, the MEC just referred to M, to, to, to Honorable Mariette uh, and Pitaway as Maritzupna. That too is this disrespectful. It is quite degrading. And you know what Maritzupna means, and that is wrong. I, I did Should, not hear that. Honorable MEC, do you do refer? You, to Honorable Peter Way as Madi Zipna. You I did. Didn't. We heard her now, Speaker. You're Honorable, not lying and you're misleading, Speaker. Honorable MEC, Honorable Chakao, I will request that uh, the, the staff here help me with that. I did not hear it. I will come back with a ruling on that thing. Continue, Honorable MEC. We are indeed in a very difficult situation as government, having to make difficult economic and life decisions and strike the balance. The social classes existing in our country are making it difficult as most of our people find themselves in the immense forms of abject poverty. This is the realities of the environment that most of our people have to endure for, as, for so long. And the situation was aggravated by the advent of the pandemic. Gaps existing due to the unequal society created by the inhumane, inhumane apartheid past are exposed and subject the government to extreme economic pressures to try and provide for the poor and black majority of our people. Madam Speaker, yesterday the country was burying the last Livonia trialist, Isitwalangu, Baba and Rumlangu, he spent the rest of his life fighting for the equal society for which all live in peace and harmony. He spent 26 years of his life in prison at Robben Island, but was never deterred from fighting for freedom that we are all enjoying today. Baba Mlangen is one of our own as the free status, as, the, as he originates from the rural areas of Bethlehem, where he's, he left his umbilical cord. We need not fail him. In, in his endeavors to fight for a free and just society as the free state. May his soul and that of other leaders of our struggle find eternal peace and rest. Indeed, July is an important month as it was also declared Mandela month as he was born on the 18th July 10, 19, 1918. Nelson Mandela was also known as David Muzamai to evade arrest during apartheid. He spent 27 years in prison fighting for our freedom. Upon his release, he left the shackles of bondage at the prison doors, uh, treating every citizen as equal before the government as the first black president under democracy. He preached and practiced reconciliation in the pursuit of 
building equal society with no unjust society, social classes. He is indeed our liberator and our end who they life to a free and just society for which we are enjoying today. Madam Speaker, I deem it fit to give the free lecture, especially to those outside the ANC, for those for them to understand our history and where we come from and all the sufferings that our people are, are now seeing now that have been exposed by the advent of uh, COVID-19. We cannot reverse the sacrifices of our leaders and the gains of our freedom by arguing matters that are obvious and crystal clear. The speech by Honorable MEC Kadisha Brown was crystal clear and profoundly for poor. She unequivocally expressed government's intention to save and protect the life of the citizens of this province. As public representatives and as coming from the organization that has you the have of people at two heart, minutes, we one welcome and support the budget speech presented by the provincial treasury to this August House. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable MEC. Uh, I now call Honorable Majage to address the House. Honorable Member, you've got eight minutes to do so. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, protocol is observed. Morning to my commissars and fellow fighters. Indeed, uh, every day, uh, Madam Speaker, it, it comes to pass. Every day it comes to pass that uh, the new dawn was just a, a colossal scam. A new dawn was just a colossal scare. No matter how many times you watch uh, Titanic and you pray that it should not sink, eventually it sink. We will forever, Madam Speaker, converse and lobby for physical framework that should, among others, allocate 40% to national spheres of government and 60% to local, local sphere of government. We will forever converse and lobby for creation of sovereign wealth funds as it will be a vehicle that will assist us to uh, deal with the momentous task that we are facing as a country instead of uh, instead of uh, going back door to IMF and request funds and all of that, which eventually will compromise our sovereignty as a country in terms of structural adjustment and all and all of that. We will forever continue and to converse for nationalization of South African Reserve Bank as a vehicle that will also assist us in terms of what must happen. We will forever object to the present system of division of revenue uh, and we will forever ask a question of how equitable is the equitable share and we might want to dwell deeper in this phenomenon and get the justification of the formula which is used in this in this regard. We will further converse and demand that 50% of funds allocated to local government must be used soon solely to deliver services at that level, even if it can be reinforced, reinforced uh, Madam Speaker. We need to highlight uh, employment targeting as a primary measure of our physical. We will forever demand the state to build its capacity in order to abolish tenders. We will demand we, we will also demand that losing grants due to non spending be dealt with head on as this practice don't affect necessarily those officials in administration, but it affects directly our people on the ground, uh, specifically the poor. Not, notably, we have, written, we have seen or witnessed that as a province, our reduction on grants is almost 461 uh, uh, million. The prioritization of this budget. Uh, Madam Speaker, due to COVID-19, has indeed present, presented us with a new normal, which amongst others have created COVID pioneers, replacing what we call, what commonly known as tender pioneers. This COVID, uh, this COVID pioneers ask Avengers who their intention are solely to loot 
the money that is intended to assist our people in terms of coronavirus. Coronavirus, uh, Madam Speaker, started in China as a virus, went to Italy as a pandemic, and came to South Africa as a business. Hence, today in the public domain, there is a narration of COVID pioneers, which some scavengers create, created companies quickly in order to, to tap on the reproduction of COVID-19 funds. We will zoom to that space and find out who are these companies who have benefited this far on 276 million the province has spent the, uh, this far. Moreover, employees in various public institutions still cry for protective clothing. Closely. Nationally, it's worse. As 500 billion has been blown like that. 500 billion has been blown just like that. Uh, hence, hence the call uh, from the EFF for the establishment of other committee over that will oversee COVID-19 procurement and combat uh, uh, corruption. Madam Speaker, both provincial, uh, provincial Treasury and COGTA must at one point turn the corner and ask itself, does it does uh, enough in terms of uh, unpacking Section 71 and 72 reports for municipalities uh, on a monthly basis? And also, does this one-on-one -on -one se session with departments really works? Are we diagnosing them correctly? Are we not giving them panada when, in fact, they're having gout? Are we diagnosing them correctly? That's the question that the provincial treasurer and provincial corporate must ask themselves. Because here in here out, the Auditor General report uh, put a, a, a grim picture in terms of Free state finances, both in municipalities and provincial uh, departments. Madam Speaker, uh, in terms of the three departments, namely education, police, police roads and transport, and to some extent, this year, we are basically setting up those uh, departments for failure in terms of what it has been allocated to. Technically, those those depart three departments, their budget is uh, unfunded and uh, and uh, uh, unfunded, and uh, uh, before we know it, they will be going to provincial treasury to request uh, to be assisted because because there are the, because there are penalties that has not been revoked by the provincial uh, treasury. Two minutes. Again? Two minutes left. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Because there are penalties that have not been revoked. By the by, the provincial treasurer, and as things stands, they are going to have accruals that will have a negative impact in terms of their 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 in terms of their budget. Uh, so before we know it, it will be approaching provincial treasurer requesting for for assistance, and then uh, as a result, uh, as the EFF, we are not going to support this uh, uh, this budget and. Uh, because when everything else has failed, uh, Madam Speaker, at least one thing that we can give our people is dignity. It's, it's for them to have roof on top of their tables uh, in, terms of, in, ter in terms of giving them houses and all of that. And as things stands now, have, uh, having lost 108 million in the previous financial year from human settlement, I can see we are still going to lose another money in this financial year. And uh, our people will, 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 will always remain in informal settlement. Uh, they will never have houses. So as a result, we are not supporting this bill. And once more, the new dawn was just a colossal scale. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members. Um, before I, I call the next speaker, Honorable Members, I wish to uh, deliver the ruling on the Point of order that was raised by Honorable Hachau when Honorable MCC was addressing the House. The Honorable Member, the Honorable Till, did refer to Honorable Peter Way as Madi Zipna. My ruling is that, Honorable Members, the reference by Honorable Till constitutes offensive language with due regard to Rule 96 pertaining to offensive language. I therefore call upon Honorable Till to withdraw the reference to Honorable Member Peter Way as Madi Honorable MCT. 
I withdraw, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable um, Speaker, point of order, please. Yes, Honorable Jungleson. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, we accept your ruling and we're grateful for that ruling. But the Honorable Tsu, actually in front of everyone here, denied that she said it. So she actually lied in this house. Now, she's called an honorable member. She took an oath of office. Um, honorable Speaker, I'd like you to rule on that aspect as well. And I think this type of but conduct is gross misconduct, which should be referred to the Ethics Committee. Honorable Jefferson, I've made my ruling. Uh, yes, Honorable Tsu said uh, she didn't say that, and then I've discovered that indeed she did. And I have uh, asked Honorable Tsu to withdraw, and he has, she has done just that. Uh, I think that is that is my ruling, Honorable Member. And and let us not call uh, one another names, Honorable Member, moving forward. Uh, Honorable. Honorable Speaker. With, with all due respect, she deliberately lied to this House. She deliberately lied to you as a presiding officer. Is that acceptable? Would you perhaps rule on that aspect as well? Do you want to, to, to rule, Honorable Jungleson? Do you want to make a ruling? I want you to rule on that, Honorable Speaker, no, please. That no, the Honorable MEC lied to you and lied it, to the it House. It cannot be about what you want, Honorable Jungleson. And you know, if you are not happy with the ruling made by the presiding officer, there are processes that you can follow. But you, you cannot tell me how to rule in this house. Honorable Speaker, then we'll accept that. But when we call a liar in future in this legislature, you mustn't rule against us. Thank you. No, when you call no, a, liar, a liar, I will again check if that is parliamentary. If you do that in this house, we are going to check if it is parliamentary to call any member a liar in the House. Honorable Sanfiren, please address the House. Madam Speaker, Honorable Amy C. Yes. Brown, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Honorable Amy C. Brown, yourself, together with your department, now known as Team Treasury, represent the Free State on all the budgeting forums uh, when the budget process commences. Unfortunately, we as members of the legislature are only allowed to become involved and provide our inputs after the national and provincial budgets have been tabled. And quite sadly, there is no way to influence the budget after it has been tabled. We as politicians and committee members are merely utilized as a means of providing legitimacy to the process for the sake of compliance and ultimately can only be referred to as a rubber stamp on proceedings. Honorable Brown, your department should provide direction on ex expenditure and there is an even bigger task bestowed on you to ensure that the cents are turned around and that the budget focuses more on the core service delivery departments to ensure that we mitigate the effect of COVID-19. If your department provides the guidance it ought to do, then how can you allow how can you allow that we procure more money towards the erection of a statue if the departments of health and education are struggling to make ends meet? This borders on criminality and cannot be justified in means. If one compares the budget that was tabled prior to COVID-19 with the current budget, one will see that the decline in the budget was a reality even prior to COVID-19. That the ANC must be uh, rubbing their hands and be thankful for the coronavirus, which has allowed them the opportunity to shift the focus and blame away from themselves. The governing party have done this by telling the people of the Free State that they care about their lives without accounting for the financial crisis we experienced even prior to COVID-19. Over the past fortnight, it has become very apparent throughout the debates that the ANC refused to man up and take responsibility for their own failures. Whilst the members of the governing party sit comfortably in their homesteads, receiving their full salary during the course of the lockdown, the Free State sits 
with the second highest unemployment rate in the country. All this whilst municipalities in the Free State collectively currently owe ESCOM in excess of 11 billion rand, over 4 billion rand to water boards, and an additional 640 million to third party creditors. The proof is in the pudding. If you cannot collect money, you cannot provide frontline municipal services. It is no wonder the ANC are lacking, uh, are licking their lips at the prospects of having the 2021 local government election being postponed. It provides them with more time to loot and steal. The reality in the free state, however, is that the tides are turning. People have lost confidence in the governing party and all their empty promises, which was evident in the election outcomes last May that led to the ANC losing three seats in this legislature. Honourable Speaker, South Africa is one of the most diverse countries in the world with a diversity of race, cultures, religion and languages, and it remains one of the most beautiful and promising countries if one takes our expertise and natural resources into account. But unfortunately, this beloved country and province was captured to such an extent that the economic growth in the free state was below 1%. Although, although projections show that we require a, an economic growth of at least 5% to mitigate poverty. It is further disconcerting to note that eco economists predict that due to the further impact of COVID-19, South Africa will experience a negative growth of minus 9%. This what will have a devastating effect on our very poor province. We must also be mindful that the reason we experience uh, we experienced a decline in our economic economy prior to COVID-19 is due to poor leadership, corruption, state capture, the plethora of downgrades, and the constant bailout of zombie state-owned enterprises, but to mention a few. Speaker, free staters have come to know the ANC as being trendsetters when it comes to lowering the ANC's already low bar. Just when you think that this bar can't get any lower, the ANC come out of the shell and surprise us time and time again. The reality is that the ANC through their draconian lockdown regulations have blood on their hands and have destroyed the livelihoods of many. Madam Speaker, Honorable Brown, in your first budget speech said, and I quote, the oversight role of provincial treasury is key in ensuring that the very limited public resources are utilized in an economic, effective and efficient manner. Honorable Brown must be living in a world of flying broomsticks and fairy dust, or she must just be plain naive. If Treasury has got the responsibility of a very important oversight role, why is the Department of Human Settlements surrendering 118 million of the conditional grant back to National Treasury? According to the explanation provided by Provincial Treasury, this amount must now be included in the 2020-21 financial year's budget. As I indicated in my provincial budget speech, we need to see greater and fair instances of financial malfeasance. Will you ensure that someone takes responsibility? Madam Speaker, every year when the audit outcomes are presented, the Free State sits with a red face because we are the only province in the country that did not receive a single clean audit within the provincial department nor within municipalities. But let me focus on the municipalities for just a second. The Auditor General's title for the 2018-19 Municipal Audit Outcomes, and it was also referred to yesterday, as released by Kimi Makwetu, has the following title, and I quote, Not much to go around, yet not the right hands at the toll. Indirectly, this is an accusation that criminal activities are taking place at municipal level. This is a disgrace for the Free State because the governing party is not taking responsibility for the malfeasance and corruption taking place within our municipalities. The ANC has been in government for 26 years and year on year continue to add their dismal track record in office. For 26 years they have continued to add their, uh, to be kicking, for 26 years they have been kicking the can down the road, but this road is now at a dead end. There is no, now nowhere to hide, and you are responsible for the decay we are currently experiencing. 
Your greediness and lust for power has caused this immense poverty and delay hardship experienced by free staters. Madam Speaker, please allow me to compare the ANC-run free state to DA-governed municipalities. I know the ANC likes it if we do that because it helps to educate them. Unsurprisingly, 15 out of the top 20 best managed municipalities in South Africa are governed under the DA banner. Again, unsurprisingly, 15 of the bottom 20 worst run municipalities are run by the ANC. Whilst the DA has a brand of good, clean and transparent governance, the ANC has a brand of corruption, nepotism and cronyism. Yes, indeed, Speaker, the ANC has become synonymous with poor governance. The Department of Treasury should set an example of what good reporting and financial management entails. Unfortunately, the Auditor General paints a gloomy picture in the 2018-19 audit outcomes. I want to borrow from a quote directly out of the Auditor General's report, which reads as follows. Irregular expenditure of 13.29 million was incurred due to non-compliance with supply chain management requirements. And in the internal control deficiency, the Auditor General stated, and I quote, the leadership and management did not always exercise oversight responsibility with regards to financial reporting. These quotes represent but a few of the many cited frailties in the provincial government's efforts towards restoring sound financial management in the free state. Treasury cannot expect other departments and municipalities to improve on their audit outcomes if they themselves cannot do it. Honorable Brown, your department should lead by example. Whilst the DA welcomes Treasury's decision to embark upon the process of assisting the provincial departments to identify irregular expenditure, perhaps this department should start off by trying to determine which of the senior officials in departments and municipalities have the necessary qualification and experience required to, to be appointed in terms of the relevant legislation. We cannot ignore the fact that the PFMA and the MFMA require a certain standard to management skills and qualifications pertaining to specific positions. This will expedite the process of taking control of poor managed municipalities and departments. You've got two minutes left, Honourable Madam Speaker, through the various speeches from DA members, we highlighted the devastating corruption specifically during the COVID-19 pandemic which has unfolded in the free state under the not so watchful eye and leadership of the ANC. But heed this warning, Honourable Brown, the people in the free state are united and are fighting against a divided majority party. Honourable Brown, my question to you is, what is the legacy that you wish to leave behind? Will you become part of the Zuma Mahashule legacy of corruption or will you fulfil your constitutional mandate of ensuring that public money is accounted for. Will you allow yourself to be used as a king? Point of order, Honourable Speaker. Of Honourable Speaker, point of order. What is the point of order, Honourable uh, Chief Whip? Uh, Honourable Van Furen has got no right to say uh, that the leaders of the ANC have done corruption. Will he like it when I say he's a racist? Are you a racist? Are you a racist, Honorable Van Fieren? Honorable... Speaker, are you going to rule on this? Honorable... You, you must them. never call people corrupt when they are not corrupt. Point of order, Madam Speaker. Point of order. I want you to rule, Madam Speaker. Honorable uh, uh, Peter Wayne, I'm, I'm about to rule on a point of order. Honorable Peter Wayne, I think I have long uh, referred to this matter. You cannot, whenever you take a podium, and refer to people, especially when you mention names. That person, when the person has not been convicted by any court of law and keep saying the person is corrupt, you wouldn't want that to be done to you. Can you I'm sorry, to Madam you? Speaker, you refer to me now. Uh, what are you referring to? Why would I refer to you, Honorable Peter Way? Because I'm talking to Honorable Van Fieren. Now you addressed me. You said honourable no, Peter Way. No, I'm not addressing you. I am no, check the record, please. I, I, I'm ruling a uh, point of order. Honourable Peter Way, can you please 
please withdraw the statement that particular people that we have mentioned are corrupt. Again, you're referring to me, Honorable Speaker. I never said anybody's corrupt. Honorable Kitawe, it is Honorable Finn Fanfiren who is on the podium, not you. And Honorable Chief, we've raised a point of order. I am I'm, I'm ruling on a point of order, not you. To you, I said, don't raise a point of order on top of a point of order. I'm confused. So, do who are you speaking now? Confident. Okay. Um, Honorable Speaker, I will withdraw the fact that I said corruption, legacy. It was I said, and I, I For corruption with in particular with reference to me, specific you, you, needs. You want to respond, so let me respond, and then after that, I would request you to ask the the chief who have to withdraw what he said that I'm a racist. I said in my speech, and then you can rule on this. The Zuma Mahasuli legacy of corruption. It's a legacy. I didn't say that no. I committed corruption. I said it's a legacy. Uh, no, honorable, no court of law has ruled on that. No court of law has given us that evidence so far and say we rule to say these, the legacy of these people is that of corruption. So it is wrong to make reference to that as much as it is wrong for the chief whip to refer to you as, as, as a racist. And I will respond to that. Can you okay. please with Honourable Speaker, the, uh, Zuma is currently in court. So is there has, a has he been convicted? Has he been convicted? Oh, yeah, that's a legacy. That's a legacy. He is in court. He's being charged. No, Honourable Peter, uh, Honourable Fanfaren, we draw that statement. And that's, it's difficult for me because you refer to me as Honourable Peter by the whole time. Do I look like her? What is Honourable, Honourable, that? That is a mistake, Honourable Fanfaren. We Did draw that the Honourable Chief Whip just, just to withdraw his statement. No, I am saying because he was responding to you, I will okay. take care of that, but I'm taking care to on the uh, uh, of the, the order that was raised uh, against you, Honourable Member. Please withdraw that and let uh, me deal with the other matter. So, so you want me to withdraw the fact that I said there's a legacy of corruption? No, you did not say there is a legacy of corruption. That is something else. But you mentioned That's what I'm specific I'm names. reading it from my speech, yeah. No, you mentioned specific it's names. Corruption. That's what I said. You, no, you mentioned specific names. And you just reiterated just now when you were speaking. You reiterated that. I, Madam Speaker, you, you can you you to to just to refer back to, to the speech. I'm going to read you the phrase again. Will you become part of the Zuma legacy of corruption? Honorable Fanfiren, when you were trying to explain what you said in your speech, you said it again that uh, 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 Mr. Zuma and Mr. Mahashule have a legacy of corruption. And yes. my ruling is saying you cannot refer to specific names. And you even said there is a court case. And I said, but the court case has not ruled out. The court case has not said this person was found guilty of anything. You specified names. My issue is on the names of people here. I lost no, you now. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm back. Back. Uh, I don't. Do you want? Okay, let me withdraw that. I, re, I withdraw the legacy of corruption so that we can continue. So that no, I can finish. No, you that. don't can withdraw you, the legacy of corruption. You leave, I, you withdraw that pertaining to the names that you mentioned. That was the point of order. So I should, with, I should take out Zuma Mahashule. Yes. We draw but that. Why? This draw is an open statement. debate. You said it's an open honorable debate. Peter honorable, sorry, Honorable Peter Way. Honorable Fanfiren, you know what you said. I said it. What I said that the Zuma Mahashule legacy of corruption is exactly what it is. And then we draw what that statement. We draw that statement. I can't I'm busy with the point of it's order. It's I don't want anybody to call me now. Uh, we draw that statement, Honourable Member. Draw that, Madam Speaker. It's a fact. It's a legacy of corruption. But when you say it is a fact, it, it must be proven. I'm sorry. When you say Madam it is Speaker, a Madam it Speaker, something. If you are saying it's a and, fact, and, uh, Honourable Speaker, this, there is this, a difference. The fact that the difference between an allegation and a fact. Let us agree on that. The, Madam Speaker, there is a difference between an allegation. And effect. Madam Speaker, 
Peter Way, Peter Way, you can't rule. You can't rule over the speaker's ruling. Wanna Peter Way? I'm not ruling. I'm asking to to Peter, to, to, to you just. You must abide by the speaker's here. ruling. Wanna Peter Way? The court has ruled that you can call Juma a thief. The court has ruled that you can call Juma a thief. Honourable. Peter Way, I don't need what you are doing. These people are racist. Order. If you are a kleptomania, if they are racist, if you are in order, can we call a point of order in the process? Honorable. You are cleansed. Honorable members, please, order. You are not helping me. Everybody who is talking. Order. Point of order speaker in the process. No, I am busy with a point of order, honorable member. I'm busy with a point of order and I'm waiting for the response by Honorable Van Firen. Yeah, but our point, Speaker, is that. Uh, oh, let me deal with a point of order for Honorable Van Firen to withdraw using names and say it's a fact. There is a difference between allegation and a fact. When we talk about allegation, you are talking about something else. When we're talking about the fact, something completely different. I'm on that right now. Madam, Madam Speaker, you, you, when we started off, said that this is an open debate. Um, I'm still on the The fact. open debate does, does not mean it, you must it, then it, uh, say it, the, the things that are wrong. I, I am the I, rest. I, I, of I, accept, I accept the open debate. I myself and the rest of South Africa are strongly under the impression that there's corruption. And it was yes, not about your impression. You are speaking facts here, Panfire, not your impression. Honorable Panfire, there is a difference between an impression and. There's no way that I can lie to the people of the country and drawing that. You must sit down if you don't want to abide with it. And what is strange to me is that the, the moment that I can you allow racism card that they want to play? It's easy. It's easy that when you when you find yourself into uh, that you actually draw a card of racism and now suddenly you say that. Go back and go and see what, what your president did, what Zuma did. What is Mahashir? Is is how the free state actually declined? Oh, and Honorable Van Firen, are you going years. to withdraw or are you not with, going with to withdraw? economy with less than 1% in the free state, people losing their jobs. Half Throw him out. Young people. Honorable Van Firen, are you going to withdraw? I'm not going to withdraw. I'm not going to withdraw that. That is why you are a racist. Honorable Member, that is why you are a racist. You come out of the racist. Honorable Chief Whip, that is why you are a racist. You are a racist. You are a racist. You are a racist. We draw that. Unless. Honorable yes. Speaker, can you get some order in the house, please? We can't continue like this. People are watching. The chief yes. whip is shouting because on the side, calling people racist. Um, he is a, he is a racist. Racist. Oh, what I'm going to say? Oh, what I'm going to say? Oh, what I'm going to say? Oh, what you believe they're not corrupt when you are the de descendant of the same people you're trying to you protect must, you from. You must shut up, Chakao. With what you are not keep away. Keep away. They're not nothing. You must remove your big names. They are going to shut you out. DA is going to fire you. Honorable Speaker, can I get some dignity in the house, please? The new Honorable Chief. The DA is going to fire you, Chakao. Make sure that you take off those 400 names that you are putting there. Uh, Order. My image has nothing to do with your kleptomaniac tendencies. I get a whole one. I'm not wise. Can you speak to Soto? Are you able to? Can you interpret what you are saying? As the chief I laid it what DA did. Can you listen? South Africa doesn't need racists. Don't we need don't need to manage myself, Honorable Chief Whip. 
100. We don't, we don't need people that steal and loot. South Africa can't. Unfortunately, are you struggling? Uh, Honorable Chief Whip, I want to come and deal with what you've just said. I want to deal with what you've just said. It's equally wrong, but allow me, Honorable Members, to go back to Honorable Fanfiren. Honorable Fanfiren, I want to request that you withdraw the statement that uh, 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 you said before about uh, 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 names of the people. Um, Madam Speaker, I was very clear. I'm not going to withdraw that. It's a fact. Uh, Can you then please leave the morning. house? Uh, Can and you so, then please leave uh, the house? People are suffering. I will not withdraw that. Can you then please leave the house? I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm waiting for you to leave the house. Amber. Amber. Honorable Speaker. Honorable. No, 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 no. Honorable uh, 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 Chief Whip, we draw the remarks that you repeatedly made that Honorable Fanfiren is a racist. Those remarks are not in order in the House. Can you please withdraw that? Honorable Speaker, it is not, it is not right also for Honorable Fanfiren to I call have... other people corrupt people. And that is, that is unethical. Honorable Chief Whip, you, you mean I brought so. Honorable Khafau, Honorable Chief Whip, you brought that to my attention. And while I was busy dealing with that, you then repeatedly said Honorable uh, uh, Fanfiren is a racist. That was equally wrong. You should have allowed me as the presiding officer to take care of the issue. Can you please withdraw that statement? Honorable Speaker, unreservedly, I withdraw that statement that Honorable Fanny Piren is a racist. Thank you very much. Honorable Members, let us proceed. I will now call Honorable Meko to address the House for 20 minutes. What is in the order? Honorable, honorable speaker. Yes, honorable Khakam. Honorable speaker, I just would like you to allow this house to note that the chief whip is responsible. No, there is no such as not. You either raise a point of order, I rule on that. Don't address me. You, I did not give you a platform to address. Okay. You are not honorable. going. To I'm raising a point of order. Raise a point of order and please be straight to your point of order. Do not make a speech. Yes, I'm trying. I'm trying, yes. Honorable Speaker. Just give me an opportunity to do so, please. Okay. Right. Honorable Speaker, my point of order is on the constant lack of discipline by the chief whip while he's responsible well, he's responsible for ensuring that we have discipline in this house. He's the one who's day in, day Honorable out. Honorable I made a ruling. I made a ruling on, a, on the Honorable Chief Whip, and the Chief Whip has withdrawn. The Chief Whip himself can't even begin to order himself. Honorable Khakhaw, I have ruled on what Honorable Chief Whip said. What more do you want? You just want to speak. Honorable Mego, proceed and address the House. Uh, speaker, thank you very much. Speaker, can you hear me? Speaker, you, you are not audible. Speaker, I, I want to address you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Honorable. We, 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 we apologize. Uh, I just spoke to the chief whip. The decision is that uh, our minutes will be given to the MEC. What minutes? The ones where I'm supposed to address the house. 
And why is that so, Honorable Member? The Chief Whip will explain, uh, but that's the issue we've decided as the ANC. So are you saying you are not going to address the House? Yes, currently I'm not. The, the MEC will then take the minutes. Uh, and uh, speaker, no point of order, please. Honorable, um, Honorable Meko, the, the, the snack here is that if you forfeit uh, your, 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 your debate in the House, those minutes are not, cannot form part of what has been debated in the House. Because whatever we, re we record here, the minutes are the minutes of what transpired in the House. So those minutes, uh, your speech that was not read in the House, cannot then form minutes of the proceedings of this house, unfortunately. Are you there? Okay, we, we, we hear you, Speaker. We hear you. Um, just, just a small address. And I, I'm, I'm not aware, not aware that, 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 that the, the, the Speaker is aware, speaker is aware that, that we did practice this uh, approach of handing over our minutes somewhere as part of our strategy. Uh, I'll speak for a few minutes and then uh, we will request that the same principle must still be applied. Because uh, it was done some time ago with the MEC of Social Development. Number of speakers did uh, uh, contribute those minutes. In short, speaker, the ANC in detox. Speaker, Please. Um, Honorable Fanfiren, uh, sorry, on, Honorable uh, um, Jan sorry, sorry for that. What's your point of order? Um, Honorable Speaker, I'd just like you, clar to, you to clarify something. I hear what the Honorable Miku said that it was done previously, but I don't think it is correct I, I because MECs are giving a specific time to talk. And then political parties order, honorable, are given some order, time. Order, and political, order, honorable, uh, political order, parties' honorable, time is not the MEC's time. No, 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 no. Order, Honorable Jankelsen. Your problem is that you seem to want to run the House when there is a presiding officer. That is your problem. I have ruled on that based on the fact that there is no rule that allows that. And, 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 and for the fact that we are having a virtual platform. There are things that we must make sure that when we do them, they are not going to come back at us. There is no rule on what uh, uh, Honorable Meko is a speaker on the podium that is uh, uh, on, the, on the chair that is presiding over the proceedings. Continue, Honorable Meko. No, no, Speaker, it, it's okay, but we don't, we don't want not to raise an issue that uh, there's a precedence on the issue when the chair of chairs was chairing the sitting on the debate. Uh, it happened. People deliberately did not complete their minutes and they handed them, them over for, for our, the MECs when they reply to conclude some of the issues that they could not conclude during the address. And I welcome the fact that it's, it's not, it's not, it's not in the, in the, in the, uh, in the rules, and, and that's why it can be explored. And, and as I said, we're arguing with the ANC that there is a precedent. But nonetheless, a uh, speaker, uh, the, the ANC accept the, the speech and, and we support it. Um, and for the following reasons, speaker, in summary, that uh, we, we welcome the pronouncement that the AMC has uh, indicated around support for municipalities, in particular in relation to municipality finance uh, and their audits. Uh, we did indicate as the ANC that uh, we were particularly not happy about the outcomes of the, the audit outcomes uh, of, of, of municipalities in particular. 
And, and that's why we appreciate MEC Kadisha that your continued and focused as well as increased allocation to support municipalities uh, to improve, of course, service delivery and, of course, the support on financial accountability and viability is welcome. Uh, um, and, 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 and in our understanding, municipalities remain in the cold phase of service delivery. And this is to say that uh, we, we understand the rampage financial discipline that is there, but we also appreciate that uh, um, the majority of grievances that our people would have, whether they are by law should be provided by municipalities or province and national, sometimes put many municipalities under pressure uh, to be able to do uh, uh, certain things. We, we are continuing to argue that MEC Kadita necessarily financial discipline does not mean that uh, there's no service delivery, but we know that financial prudence will be a catalyst for service delivery. Uh, it is our view that council can serve communities better if they adhere to financial discipline, although the latter must be enabled to ensure and fast track quality and sustainable service delivery. Your understanding in this relationship, it is also welcome and uh, uh, um, highly appreciated. We understand in Missy Kadeja that uh, the support provided by Free State Provincial Treasury extends beyond monetary. Part of the intervention was on budget engagement conducted, which resulted in an increase of funded budget at about uh, 14 municipalities in our province. We also appreciate that uh, uh, the Treasury is putting pressure on municipalities in terms of accounting and reporting, both to provincial and national treasury. Uh, uh, and that we think that it will go a long way to reinforce the 10th point plan of COCTA uh, um, um, to help our municipalities to improve on financial accounting and uh, financial management. Let me see, we further uh, uh, appreciate that uh, you have upskilled the SCM committees uh, in municipalities, and you are continuing to support them uh, on registration with regard to the issues of managing the 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 uh, 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 deviations, the issues of managing uh, issues of uh, procurement broadly, uh, and we think that uh, it's one of the areas which will ensure that uh, uh, municipal municipalities focus on it. And, and at all costs, we avoid uh, these deviations. And that support is also, uh, is also being welcomed. Your focus, and I think emphasis on the compliance of municipalities with regard to conditional grant is equally a welcome uh, uh, approach, let me see. Uh, and, and we think that uh, this support has also assisted to a larger extent that our municipalities have got to be disciplined around uh, issues of the conditional grant in terms of their implementation, as well as uh, the duration uh, expected of the implementation of uh, 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 those conditional grants. Again, and lastly, we also appreciate support MEC Treasury provided around the, the municipality systems of collection, collection of revenue, uh, which of course results in huge recoverable debt, debtors book. However, it is in part, however, this is in part due to somehow economic conditions and increase on indigent base. Part of the solution is to seek an alternative funding strategy, in particular of the rural municipalities. And this is the issue that uh, the ANC would want uh, the Department of Treasury to champion and ensure that uh, we find a balance. Uh, 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 because our understanding is that the correlation effect of weak collection rates have resulted in municipalities owing bulk services providers and other creditors like ESCOM. In as much as ESCOM and Telcom and all creditors have got to be played, have got to be paid, but we're appealing that there must be a spirit of cooperative governance between municipalities as well as uh, their creditors in the form of Telcom and ESCOM. 
speaker, I'll ask you on Eskom account. I hear you've been speaking and I can't hear you. Want to indicate that through Treasury, the province is working closely with Eskom to address challenges of the Eskom account. A number of municipalities have been assisted uh, by the province led by Treasury to ensure that uh, uh, all of these things, uh, the, the issue of the uh, accounts of creditors has been attended to. Part of that is to attend to issues of the quality of the network, which is supposed to be put in, 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 in poor municipalities. Uh, and, and, and examples, uh, speaker, are many. Uh, and, and as the ANC, we, we really welcome the broad support that Treasury is giving to municipalities. The ANC support the budget vote, Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, Honorable Members, um, the Honorable MEC Brown may now apply and do so in 10 minutes. For 10 minutes. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Let me once again thank you for the opportunity provided by this August House to share with the House and our communities on the proposed budget of provincial treasury. On the close of Nelson Mandela month, I would like to conclude by quoting statements of our first democratic president, Tata Nelson Mandela. He says on the power of words, it is never my custom to, you, to use words lightly. If 27 years in prison have done anything to us, it was to use the silence of solitude to make us understand how precious words are and how real speech is in its impact on the way people live and die. And I want to re-emphasize, Honorable Speaker, that the leaders of this House should provide positive words to influence positivity and optimism to the people of the free state. Our President Nelson Mandela quoted those words in July 2000. I'd like to reply on Honorable Smith from FF Plus with regards to the 60% of savings that we've made on operational budgets. Now, subsistence and travel is um, part of everyday operations. If you were in a business, you would need an operational budget, and that comes through your OPEX funding, right? So operations is to travel from, place a, play, from point A to B, and I'm sure that the FF Plus would come back and say, if we didn't bring ambulances from point A to B, it would be a problem of the ANC. Or if we didn't get vets through this lockdown, which was an essential service to farmers, it would have become an issue to the Freedom Plan Plus because we didn't get farm workers and vets in time to deal with the farms. And social workers who need to deal with their mandate has to continue to travel. So we have got cost containment measures in this province and Treasury really re in ensures that those cost, cost containment measures happen. So that happens throughout the year. It doesn't necessarily happen during a pandemic. To Honorable Majake from the EFF, it is the policy position of the ANC to prioritize the state bank. It's uh, quite surprising to see that the EFF grand stand on the issues of the Reserve Bank. It is furthermore the ANC policy position on our Reserve Bank, on point 27 of the 54th Conference Resolutions, the ANC reaffirmed its resolution of the 53rd National Conference Resolution on the mandate of the South African Reserve Bank. And I quote, South Africa requires a flexible monetary policy regime aligned with objectives of the second phase of transition. Without sacrificing price stability, monetary policy should also take account of other objectives such as employment creation and economic growth. Point 28 says the South African Reserve Bank is the central bank of the Republic. It performs its functions independently, but in reg regular consultation with the Minister of Finance, the right is to issue paper money, set interest rates and regulate the financial system system resides wholly with the Reserve Bank. On point 29, it is, however, a historical anomaly that the private shareholders of the Reserve Bank, and it resolves that it, the Reserve Bank should be 100% state-owned. On point 30, government must develop a proposal to ensure full public ownership in a manner that does not benefit private shareholder speculators." Unquote. 
And this is ANC policy, so thank you for supporting our ANC policy. Honorable Speaker, it is a sad day to see that it has become fashionable to call people corrupt. And in this, the strategy that the DA has adopted as their campaigning instrument, that will, however, not defocus us from providing services to our people. We have to focus and we have to have autonomy on what's within our control as a province. Let me remind members that corruption happens at an individual level, not at an organizational level. We cannot say the ANC is corrupt. We should name and shame individuals within the ANC that's corrupt. I challenge all the grandstanders in this House, Honorable Speaker, to list, name and shame individuals that have been found guilty by a court of law that has committed corruption. Unapologetically, Honorable Speaker, I have been part of the President Zuma and Premier Mahashula administration. Who is the current leadership of the ANC, NEC? I'm also part of the Premier Sisim Tombela and President Cyril Ramaphosa administration, and they are the current leaders of the ANC. I have full faith in all our current leaders and past leaders of the ANC, Honourable Speaker. They were elected by the majority of South Africans, majority of the people in this country. I will never deny that these are South African lead leaders. They are written in the history of this country. It can never be deleted. It can never be rebutted, no matter what you intend to do. I will never be apologetic for being a member of the ANC. It is the only African liberation movement that robustly comes up with solutions for African problems. I am a product of the ANC. Nobody will change that. Honorable Speaker, it is today who we should question. Today we could question and continue to question world politics. We should continuously analyze and understand world politics. Those who have independent views of the world and the treacherous capitalist ways of the world, forgetting communism and socialism policies underpinned in our national democratic revolution, only those people who question that will understand our position as South Africa in our world politics. It is the opposition's way to find ways to destroy the faith of the majority of South Africans who continue to have in the ruling party. And the ANC continues that with our policies to strive for humanity. Now, almost in conclusion, um, Honorable Speaker, there are some teachings that I've begun to practice, which is on the principles of Adanta. And we should question, ask ourselves, what is the purpose why do we work and what do we work so hard for? Do we work hard for oneself? Do we work hard for family? Do we work hard for our community, for our country, for humanity and entire living beings? And the ANC is saying that outside of community, country, humanity, entire human beings, and that is why environmental affairs is so important. That is why forestry and fishery, the world is so important to the African National Congress. The, the president, Tata Mandela, uh, he also stated in, um, sorry, before I go there, let me quote, you can no longer see or identify yourself solely as a member of a tribe, but as a citizen of a nation, of one of people working towards a common purpose. And this is an African poet who formed part of the African liberation movement um, in Africa. Honourable Speaker, Provincial Treasury will continue to provide leadership with governance, both at um, departmental level, municipal level. We will continue to support our, our departments. We will continue to support our executives, both at a department level and at a municipal level. Mayors, MECs, we will continue to ensure that supply chain prescripts are tightened across all spheres of government. And I, I would like to say that I must thank and support the support I have from the ruling party and the criticisms from oppositions. I think it's important for us to candidly reflect on those criticisms, and I'm happy to take that. And honorable speaker, I do take note of all the comments across all the budget speeches that were made across the appropriation bill and about the reduction of budget on, on non-core items and other items. In conclusion, honorable speaker, let me close by saying on adversity, difficulties break some men, but make others. No ax is sharp enough to cut the soul of a sinner who keeps on trying. One armed with the hope 
that he will revise even at the end. This was Nelson Mandela on the 1st of February 1975, writing a letter to Winnie Mandela. Thank you very much. Pia Lebor. Thank you, Honorable MEC. Honorable members, the reply by Honorable MEC concludes the debate on vote for Free State Provincial Treasury. We are now going to proceed, Honorable members, to the next vote. The Secretary shall read motion two. Thank you. Honorable members, the vote before the House is vote one, Premier. The Honorable MEC, uh, uh, sorry, Honorable members. The Honorable Premier, may Dombela may address the House for 14 minutes. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker of the Legislature, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable members of the legislature and the executive council, mayors and speakers of municipalities, uh, let me just say to all leaders of the community of our community uh, and to all people of the free state, Dumelang. Honorable speaker, tomorrow we mark the end of the Mandela month. The month here marked to honor one of the founding fathers of our democracy. It is said that we have, uh, during this month, lost a uh, prominent members of the society and uh, the leaders of our movement, the African National Congress. Yesterday, we, we, boy, we boy farewell to the last remaining Rivonia trialist, Seaparangwe, the son of the Free State, Andrew Mukiti, May his soul rest in peace. Two weeks ago, on this very month, we paid our last respect to the daughter of our struggle heroes, Nelson Mandela and Winima Dikizela Mandela, Ambassador Zinzi Mandela. We celebrate and honor these and many other fallen heroes of our struggle who lost their lives. They, of course, sacrifice the better part of their lives for the freedom we all enjoy today. It is now five months since the province reported its first case of COVID-19 pandemic. Never before had we seen such a crisis in years. In no time, the world was turned upside down and forced into a state emergency. No aspect of our everyday life has been left untouched by COVID-19 as effect of what started as health concern spread into other areas of our life. A tool of box of safety measures such as wearing of masks in public, washing our hands with soap, limitations of gatherings, travel, restrictions and social distancing was introduced to curb the spread of COVID-19. As the COVID, as, as the number of COVID-19 cases begins to increase, the country was forced into lockdown and a state of disaster was declared to save human, human lives. The inter intervention has allowed us to fatten the curve, undertake screening, quarantine, test, and prepare our healthcare facilities for what is to come. Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, we are living through the effect of COVID-19. Because of the trade disc disc description, falling co consumption and low productivity, the country is now in recession. The mining, the manufacturing, agriculture, retail, financial and tourism sectors of our economy have all been affected. Companies, factories, farms, 
banks and tourism establishment have had temporary have have had to temporarily close down. It is perhaps the informal sector that uh, was the hardest hit, where many people survived on daily cash. Faced with the sudden loss of income, many people in this important sector of our economy were forced into unemployment. Poverty has increased and many households have been left without food. However, all of these restrictions measures introduced were necessary. We want to thank our people for their understanding and cooperation during this time. And I know it is really not easy. Our appreciations also go to the social partners who assisted with uh, the provision of food parcel in vulnerable communities and uh, personal protective clothes equipment. Honorable Deputy Speaker, what is more painful about this pandemic is that some people have lost their lives. Others are sick in hospitals and families have in many ways been affected. You know, I've heard in Kwakwa, or a Honali family, Sokalitwing, Kim Meli Banaba Hai Baba Bedi, who says Ali Mo fell within a week. Hamwaya wa wana upumileka hot. To those infected and affected by COVID-19, we want to express our deepest sympathies. We know it is not easy, but we'll pull through this pandemic together. We need to remain strong. We must be strong and have faith in our collective efforts. As we begin to ease the lockdown restrictions under strict conditions, we have embarked on a process to repair the damage caused by this pandemic. Our approach in the province in mitigating in mitigating the spread of COVID-19 is underpinned by the following compressive trust. Inclusive health response plan, provision of food and shelter, provision of water and sanitation, enforcement of our compliance, economic recovery plan, and governance plan. The national government has made available 500 billion rents relief package fund to support businesses, <clears throat> businesses, employees, and poor households. I'm sure that one, all of us will know. And we also know that uh, we have also done something in the province. And I know that uh, you have heard when Dati Makalo was tabling last week. Madam uh, Honorable uh, 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 Deputy Speaker, <clears throat> President Cyril Ramaphosa has warned the nation that the storm is upon us. Things will get worse before they get better. And indeed, all of us are aware of that now. The road ahead has, the road ahead is still long and we need to brace ourselves for the coming coronavirus storm hitting our way. Guided by the scientific evidence we will continue with our screening and testing initiatives. Quarantine sites have been identified and prepared accordingly. We are indeed we are providing food parcels and psychosocial support during these tough times. Water and sanitation is also being provided. Can we please work together and advise each other where problems are so that we must win this war and we must stop criticizing each other. This is a war that is facing the country and our people are relying on us. All provincial government senior managers, employees are reported for duty and, uh, and the, work, the work of government is continuing as expected.
the work will have not been possible without the combined efforts of uh, the department. The Office of the Premier will continue to state these initiatives. With, with much power, the Office of the Premier will continue to provide strategic directions to the provincial government based on a shared sense of purpose. Our immediate task is to fight COVID-19. That is the most important thing that we must do now. Although this pandemic will be with us for a while, there is a life beyond COVID-19, and we need to prepare for that. We cannot fail our people, honorable members. At this time, when they need us most. Successful growth and development of this province depend on building a capable ethical and developmental state. This is a number, number one priority that underpins all our government medium-term strategic framework priorities. The importance of this priority places the office of the premier at the center of the government's as the key driver of development. The center must hold to drive a shared development agenda and mutual support web of institutional, professional, and administrative processes. Honorable Deputy Speaker, only when we are effective, accountable, and responsible, and, and, and responsive to the needs of the people, we can achieve more. Besides teamwork, our ability to respond to our challenges and fashion, the future depends on, on our capacity to implement integrated coordination measures. So far, the Office of the Premier has been instrumental in overseeing the work of Provincial Coronavirus Command Center and Council. This has fostered collective action and more targeted approach to fight this pandemic. It has also strengthened ownership of the burden imposed by COVID-19. To enhance this work, Honorable Deputy Speaker, we have established the Free State COVID-19 Command Center Secretariat in the Office of the Premier to ensure integrated coordination of the initiatives to fight the spread of COVID-19. As we continue with our work, support services for the Executive Council and the Forum of Head of Department will be directed to this challenge and beyond. For their part, for their part clusters will serve as integrated planning, coordination, and implementation instrument across the three spheres of government. I am pleased to announce that the Premier's Economic Advisory Council has been instituted and will be soon begin its work to help stimulate economic growth in the province. The Council will be led by two of prominent business persons. I'm sure all of us will know that Lazarus Zim will be the chair of the Council and Ndade Tifezo Pisane, Itaba Deputy Ahai. Members of the Economic Advisory Council have been drawn from various sectors of our economy and society that includes the following. Agricultural sector, manufacturing sector, tourism sector, mining sector, ICT sector, institutions of high learning high learning and uh, labor formation. And very soon, Little Babona, Little Batseba, they already know themselves. It has already been established. At this time, existing of uh, initiatives by the Provincial Council of a on AIDS to reduce the number of uh, HIV infections, TB and other commun commun communicable diseases is ongoing. Honorable Speaker, Financial wastage and mismanagement are costly. This we cannot afford at all. As every cent is unaccounted for robs our people 
of the prospects of a better life. The Office of the Premier will ensure that the entirety of government adhere, adheres to the sound financial management principle. We will have no mercy on those that are found to be misusing public funds. Priorities have been set and government money will be allocated and used for the purpose it, it meant for and based on identified developments need. I have directed the senior management in the office of the premier to improve the audit finding of the previous year. We are assisted by the firm of consultants appointed by the provincial treasury to implement the audit action plan as approved. And uh, it is very clear, audit outcome must change this year. The provision of quality service also requires ethnic behavior. We will cultivate professional eth ethical conduct through financial declaration, declarations, we declarations workshops on, co on cost constitutional values and principles and dealing with financial misconducts. We therefore welcome President Cyril Ramaphosa's CSIU proclamation to investigate allegation of misuse of COVID-19 funds in government. We can't be having a problem of COVID-19 and having a problem of misusing the money at another site. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, in this uh, values that the office of the Premier will uphold, but also know that a developmental state can never be realized without the alignment of, of mandate, functions and, and structures are as informed by government priorities. It is for this reason that we will conclude a review of our organizational structure in consultation with the Department of Public Works and Administration. This will help a great focus, increase efficiency, and eliminate, uh, eliminate. This will increase efficiency and eliminate uh, aligned with the work will be enhancing performance management. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Building, oh. Honorable Deputy Speaker, we will continue to work with the Central University of Technology to promote and support innovation of uh, entrepreneurship through the Innovation Hub. This past Tuesday, we launched the Microsoft Artificial uh, Intelligence University program in partnership with C2 and Microsoft South Africa. The program will be delivered by Kijima and has been designed to pass on the skills by teaching young multidisciplinary graduates with limited or no work experience to explore, transform model and virtualize data, as well as to create the next generation uh, of intelligent solution. Investment in skills development remains important for us. Through the Free State Training and Development Institution, 2,120 officials have been benefited from our different course offerings. Work experience through learnership, internship, and skills programs was provided to 2,232 unemployed youth, to unemployed youth. The skills revolution is uh, a must in South Africa, and Africa, and Africa is a commitment. This program will continue in this financial year. The response of our economic need, we are proud that 271 local students finished their studies last year, and we now have 1,122 Bazari holders. In the free state, we now have 1,100. 23 bursary holders, of course, out of 1,123, 1, 271 have completed their studies. Internationally, 
237 bursary holders have graduated and others will graduate later this year. As we scale down this program, we are now having 702 active international bursary holders in the free state. I think it will be proper, uh, Deputy Speaker, that I must also mention that the late payment of uh, universities of the students were caused mainly by COVID-19, nothing else. And as we speak, the majority of the students, uh, uh, their bursaries have been paid. Madam Deputy Speaker, <clears throat> at this time, together with COCTA, we are implementing the, the district development model to enhance integrated planning and coordination and uh, direct strategic investment spending across the three spheres of government. The Office of the Premier is, complete, is completing the free state provincial profile that will also address the impact of COVID-19 and map the long-term and integrated planning approach in all the districts and uh, metropoli metropolitan municipality. We have appointed the members of the Executive Council as political uh, champions for each district and metro to oversee the implementation of the district development model. These members will work with the national champions compromise of ministers and deputy ministers to improve the service delivery. We must give our people better services. These champions will embark on the districts and metro consultation engagement and bring a shared understanding of the district development model. Honorable Speaker, we have, uh, we had uh, engagement with the investment and infrastructure office in the presidency. Soon we will institution, institutionalize the project management function again. Viable project will be packaged for funding and implementation will be there. We are troubled by the ongoing incident of gender based violence against women and children. We agree with President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa when he says that uh, we are faced with two pandemics, COVID-19 and gender-based violence. This is unacceptable. We cannot continue like this. Enough is enough. We urge you all members of society to stand up against this shameful act of violence. We need to speak out gender-based violence. We need to change attitude and behavior. Above all, we need to act and act now. As a government, we committed ourselves to act against gender-based violence we will stop at nothing to ensure that this scourge is eliminated, is, eliminate, is eliminated from our society. It must stop, Speaker. As our immediate intervention, we have appointed gender-based violence prevention officers in each district of the province to monitor and report incidents of violence against women and children. These officers is also, <clears throat> will also work together with social workers in districts to improve the living condition of women and children. This must really stop. It is, not, it is enough and it is going too far. Honorable Speaker, the remarkable potential in young people across all sectors and spheres in the free state is uh, undeniable. And these young people from long time ago have always been driven by the desire to change the status quo, by changing the way things are done, by changing way, the way we live, by changing unjust systems, by bringing out justice and bringing out a new beginning in the province. 
It is for this reason we say, hashtag, let's build the free state we want. The youth officer offers service with uh, inclusive fa facilities, coordinations, and mainstreaming of youth program. This office also monitors, evaluates, and coordinates coordinate interdepartmental youth structures. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, we will increase efforts. Uh, we will increase efforts in addressing youth challenges. The framework for the youth response planning, budgeting, monitoring, and auditing will be developed. We have engaged the private sector to get involved in the development uh, of our youth in the province. During uh, June month, very interesting contributions were made by the following private sector companies. Let me start. The first company was a multi-purpose, multi-choice. Multi-choice, uh, 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 Madam Speaker, gave us uh, uh, appointed 20 sports coaching learnership with stipend of 5,000 and uh, each one are going to get a laptop. 20 broadcasting learnership with a stipend of 3,000 600 and each one of them are going to get laptop and, uh, and many other things that you'll see very soon. Coca-Cola was also there, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, and this is what they have, uh, they gave us business training for young, for young business people, service providers have already been pay paid and uh, training for 50 tech shops is going to happen in the free state. Seven young business people in Valcom are going to receive a business inbox uh, they said it's a training and equip your Coca-Cola and the handover is going to take place uh, uh, very soon. 30 youth members are going to be identified in Nijoli Puzo where Coca-Cola is going to assist them, uh, Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker. In Harib, two digital systems for Harib schools are going to be, uh, uh, they are going to give two digital uh, schools in Harib, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. MTN has confirmed data connection for 40 multi-choice learners. They will receive 30 gig of data per month. Celsi, uh, ITC hubs in the rural areas, Harib District, Kopanung Local Municipality, and Tromsberg. Sun Windmill, CI, CSI project have been, are currently being rolled out just to got uh, disturbed, they have been disturbed by COVID-19. Waste to brick manufacturing to be rolled out, but after COVID in Fesile, Dabi Mupaka and Fijos Gold. And what is even more impressive is that even our minds are starting to be involved. I mean, Petra Diamonds in Coffee Fontaine, they are having so many projects, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. The mine will offer technology support and donate uh, 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 10 3G tablets with supported SIM card and data vouchers. The mine will offer 200 youth with a business, uh, uh, those who are in business, training within, let's say, main local municipality, and will receive the opportunity through the mine's enterprise development programs. The mine will donate 20 COVID-19 small business starter packs the mine will donate 500 marks to youth to improve their mobility to, and prevent a, 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 a virus transmission. Many things are going to happen there. Uh, I'm not going to say everything. The Standard Bank has already gave us 20 laptops so that we must assist uh, our youth during this uh, COVID time. And we have another friend of our poor, Mills Wills. They have also gave us uh, the Dignity Pets for, 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 for young girls. All these are going to be handed over on the 6th of uh, August. And I would like to thank them very much, uh, 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 Speaker. Speaker, because of COVID-19, we have learned the importance of rapid monitoring progress meant to fight the spread of, the, of, this, of this disease. This has helped us in providing a coordinated and integrated approach to service delivery. These measures have also proven to be important in facilitating dialogue 
and continue learning amongst the sphere of government and social partners. Today, we are stronger than yesterday. We are united by a common cause. In the fight against the, uh, this pandemic, we'll monitor and evaluate COVID-19 programs and assess their implementation in our communities. This uh, will also include incomplete government projects throughout the province. This one, we must make sure that radiates all incomplete uh, projects must happen. We will undertake a periodic field visit to determine the impact of these uh, initiatives. Our community development workers are the forefront of the fight against COVID-19. They have played an important role in identifying the vulnerable households and ensure that they receive necessary relief from government. We intend to pilot the establishment of ward-based centers to accommodate CDWs, ward councillors, and other social partners. We are going to make sure, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, that all wards, Dibanalidu offices, where CDWs and ward councillors will report every day to our communities. For this, uh, identification and to instill a sense of pride and belonging we have provided our community development workers with with uniforms and tools of trade speaker part of the responsibility of community development workers and district coordinators will be to coordinate relevant stakeholders to address identify community needs and uh, make department aware of, <clears throat> of service delivery cha cha challenges Monitoring and evaluation of the medium-term strategic framework to determine progress towards the implementation of the National Development Plan will also continue to be part of the mayor work of the Office of the Premier. Support will be rendered to the legislature as it performs its oversight function, Madam Speaker. Again, we will strengthen our relationship with relevant institutions to ensure the provision of quality data for monitoring and evaluation. Our work will also extend to local government working with COCTA. We will monitor the local government management improvement uh, model. Honorable Speaker, what we do today will shape our future. Success uh, will need all hands on deck. COVID-19 is not a government problem. It is a societal matter and a global crisis. Please let us not fight COVID-19. In the midst of the devastation of this disease, I urge you, you all to continue to maintain social distancing, wear masks, and regularly wash your hands. Many of you, particularly our health workers, have been at the forefront to fight against this pandemic. We will forever remain grateful, grateful to you we are inspired by your courage. Continue with the great work. And I want to say, on behalf of the people of the Free State, I will also want to wish MECs Ndate Tate Mahwe and Ndate Tembile, Tembeni Ngangisa, and not forgetting Mayor Siache and Mayor Mukhoje Hore Litafola, and we shall uh, overcome. Honorable Speaker, let me thank my department, DG, how can I forget my executives uh, about the work, the good work that they're doing and the support that they're, they're giving me. With this words, I therefore table the budget of the Office of the Premier for 2020 and 2021. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Premier. Honorable Members, we are now going to uh, proceed with the debate on the, on the speech of the Premier. And I will now request Honorable H. Smith to finish the House for 10 minutes. Honorable H. Smith. Good morning, uh, 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 Honourable Speaker, Honourable Madam Premier and all the Executive Members. 
honorable members of the legislature and the visitors and guests. When I look at the impressive list of activities driven by the premier, premier's office, I ask myself, where does she get the time to still breathe and the energy to lead from the front? I am looking at the impressive list of activities. An inclusive health response plan, a provision of food and shelter, provision of water and sanitation, enforcement and compliance, economic recovery plan, and governance plan. This all curb and to fight COVID-19. Screening and testing is continuously done on a daily basis. Quarantine sites are available and of good quality. The office of the premier is the front runner with all the other departments pushing her forward in support. The premier's economic advisory council has been established with Mr. Lazarus Zim as chair and Mr. Pizzani T as uh, deputy. This council are for the following sectors are from the following sectors. Agriculture, manufacturing, tourism, mining, ICT, institutions of higher learning, labor formations. The importance of such a council cannot be overstressed as the Free State Province needs urgent intervention and proactive actions to bring investors to this province. We need this urgently to empower our youth. And be assured that the Provincial Council on AIDS and TB still showing its urgency to reduce the, the number of HIV and TB infections. Madam Speaker, urgent and vigilant action against those who are abusing government funds will be on the table. We will make sure there are serious consequences for transgressors. I am happy to see the actions taken by the Premier's office to better the next audit outcome. The SIU proclamation by President Cyril Ramaphosa to investigate all allegations of corruption is welcomed and a promising step to fight those stealing or abusing government funding, stealing from our people. We need, not, we need now to be more focused and efficient through monitoring controls to, issue, to assure required results. The fact that the wellness initiatives were taken to a higher level proves also that the Premier are concerned for our employees' well-being. Because of the continuous pressure on our labour and support requirements, because of COVID-19, we have invested in skill development of 2,120 officials. Thank you, Honorable Premier, who have benefited from this program. This program will continue as we want to produce more results in providing ex expertise and scarce labor in vacuums. The fact that the Premier's office in armed 2,232 unemployed youth and empower them through leadership, internship, and skills development programs are commendable actions to, to fight against unemployment. The need now is to see that this program continues in this coming financial year. Thank you, Honorable Premier, that you progressively are already committed to this road forward. Local, prove us in the face and put a smile on the face. 271 students completed their studies last year and 1,123 are currently holding bursaries. We wish them all the blessings under these trying times when you, uh, your arms and hands are full of books and life concerns. Do not bite on your lips when the, the going gets tough, as it will bleed. But the bite but bite on God's finger and he will pull you through. Internationally, 237 bursaries holding students have already graduated this year and others will graduate later. We now have 702 bursary holders while in the process of scaling down this project. Critical important career posts. 
postgraduate students will continue. The district development model are currently implemented in cooperation with the Department of COPTA. Members of the executive who are already overcommitted are deployed in all the districts to oversee the implementation of this district development model and to work with the champion ministers and the, uh, deputy ministers. I am proud to say that as in all other departments, the Premier's office are also climbing the uphill to fight gender-based violence. We can only beat the shameful crimes against women and children if we speak up. I'm also proud that I had an opportunity to visit a safe house where abused women and children were taken care of. There are many abused women who are scared that they will, will be ejected from the false security at home if they should speak up against their abusers. Women with skills who are scared, their scars will show in public and feel as if they are the guilty party in this relationship abused by the man in brackets in their lives. Honorable Speaker, I think a register with complete details of skill for such women must be complied, compiled to market these ladies so that they can lift themselves and unlock the gates of abuse. With the support of the business sector, we can excel in supporting these valuable assets of the country. They can contribute to the economic of this country. The Department of the Premier have appointed gender-based violence prevented prevention officers who will also work together with social workers in all the districts to improve the living conditions of women and children. Honourable Speaker, I would like to commend the Honourable Premier on her leadership in motivating her executive in standing firmly against this COVID-19 virus. We as members can and must support all executive members where so required. Education or educating of our people stays a responsibility for everybody. I also want to bless those in supporting positions from cleaner to senior officials for the courage they show in coming out every day in supporting, preventing, educating, caring, healing, and many other duties, and especially those who are praying for this rainbow nation to be safe, praying every day. May God bless everyone minutes. who can make a difference in the lives of others. Two minutes Honourable left. Speaker, Honourable as member. As MPL, I support this budget. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. And Honourable G. Smith may address the House. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, the Premier refers to building the free state we want, but we would like to know who this we she referring is to. Because, Speaker, this ANC government is ruling the province under the Premier's nose. All, all members of the, are all members of the exe exe executive on the same page and working towards the same goal. Speaker, what is the goal? Is the goal in line with the needs of the people of the free state? Premier, the farmers of the free state are in trouble. They are literally fearing for their lives due to never-ending farm attacks and farm murders. Premier, in addition to this, some far farmers want to take their own lives due to droughts and other natural disasters. Premier, they feel like their lives do not matter to you or your government. Premier, I ask, no, I beg, to please start taking their lives seriously, seriously or do the right thing and set the record straight. And finally, publicly announce that this government does not care for them, for their workers, or for food security. Just tell them the truth, please, Premier. Speaker, again, I commend MEC Brown's reprioritization of funds for entertainment, catering, transport, venues, and facilities. And I challenge you also to stop spending huge amounts of money on luxuries and celebrations when this province has little to celebrate. Take leadership, Premier to do what is best for the people of the free state. Our people are jobless. Our people are hungry. And while we commend the efforts to feed the hungry during this pandemic, we need to find permanent solutions, Premier, 
to emancipate people from the state. Honorable Premier, please build the free state that we need by having conversations with free staters from all walks of life. Include free staters to be the solution to the problems of the free state. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Smith. Um, Honorable Khadebe, you may oh. address the uh, Thank you, Speaker, and the leadership of the glorious movement, the African National Congress. The Office of the Premier is a pivotal role player in providing coherent strategic leadership and coordination in provincial policy formulation and its review, planning and overseeing service delivery, planning and implementation in support of provincial and national priorities and plans. The Office of the Premier, under the, the leadership of Premier Sisin Dombela, has constantly shown commitment to improving the quality of the lives of the people of the Free State. However, the impacts of apartheid and deep far are far-reaching. In order to eradicate the legacy of a system that has been enforced with an iron fist, the new democratic government has a steep mountain to climb. The premier of the Free State in a state of the province address in 2019, she said, and I quote, what we need is unity of purpose and belief in a better future that lies ahead of us, close quote. As a province, we find ourselves at war and the enemy is the novel coronavirus, which gives rise to COVID-19 disease. The only tool currently available to mitigate the demographic events of COVID-19 is some form of lockdown to reduce contagion by breaking existing social and economic forms of contact. Such measures have been imposed a severe negative shock on provincial economy, with immediate loss of economic activity followed by medium-term and long-term econo economic effects. The response by the Premier's office in mitigating the spread of COVID-19 underpinned by the following comprehensive drivers, inclusive health, health response plan, provision of food and shelter, provision of water and sanitation, enforcement and compliance, economic recovery and governance plan. This will go a long way in assisting the fight against COVID-19, rejuvenating our economy and rebuilding the free state that we want. Honorable Speaker, we welcome the response by the Office of the Premier in establishing the Free State COVID-19 Command Center Secretariat Office to ensure integrated coordination of the initiatives to fight the spread of COVID-19 and the Provincial Coronavirus Com Command Center and Council response to curb the spread of the disease to deal with its consequences as a pandemic. The intervention to prevent the risk of infections is densely in, in densely populated areas through densifying and relocating people to other settlement areas. It's a success story, but it has also reminded us of the enormous shelter backlog in the province. The success of a program depends on accessing and realizing optimally located land. Houses can only be built on land that is suitable and well located. Honorable Speaker, as the ANC, we maintain that land expropriation is required to meet the wider and best interest of the South African society at large. Education remains an apex priority for the African National Congress and the ANC-led government. We applaud the Office of the Premier's commitment to education as the most powerful investment in human capital that as a province we have made. The President Cyril Ramaphosa in his sonar said, and I quote, if we are to break the cycles of poverty, we need to educate the children of the poor, close quote. We are proud as a province 
we have 1,223 local student buzzard holders and, and 700 active international buzzard holders. This buzzard scheme is meant to cover full duty in fees, books, and student support materials, and to provide subsidies to assist with accommodation, living expenses, and transport. Well done, Office of the Premier, for substantial investment in poor and working class students. We welcome the Office of the Premier Partnership and collaboration with two public universities in the province, namely University of the Free State and Central University of Technology. Honorable Speaker, the further education and training sector has an important role to play because it trains the technicians and middle management officers that are important to nurture the incremental innovation of number of industries. Those industries are retail, transport, logistics, tourism, distribution, they underpin the growth dynamic of the Free State Province. The Office of the Premier's commitment to process of a process of establishing ICT hubs as part of government modernization process is a step in the right direction to ensure technology is incorporated into every sector of the public service in order to improve quality and efficiency of service delivery in the process. Our dream is in that Free State should be a hub of both yes, industrial let's... revolution skills and a center of excellence for digital economic breakthroughs. We commend foresight of the Premier's office in establishing Premier's economic eco eco uh, advisory council. We welcome the initiatives of establishing this council that should, radi should take radical bold steps and measures in restructuring our provincial economy. Madam Speaker, the above should be done informed by believers, the ANC and ANC-led government that politi political power is attained not for its own sake, but to pursue political and socio-economic objectives. Corruption is not a victimless crime. It targets the poorest and most vulnerable in, in the society. We agree with the Premier that no mercy should be shown to anyone found to be misused in public funds. We also welcome the gesture by the President by establishing an NPA unit that is led by Kronje. We hope that this unit will also focus on the white collar crimes and investigate the alleged fraud of five billion that was commissioned immediately after the appointment of the CEO of ESCOM, Andre de Reid. Honorable Speaker, the Office of the Premier should ensure that all public servants in the province work together smartly with dedication and above all keeping the end of goal in mind, the bettering of the lives of the people of the free state who are still weighed down by poverty, inequality, and unemployment. The previous encapsulate my views. The drive will be too long, the seats too few, and the people too many. The speaker, I thank you for having recognized me to address the House today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Msiman, may I address the House? Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. The EFF leadership, community managing the common affairs of the bourgeoisie class, landless masses of our people in Azani. Let me take this opportunity to wish Honorable Mahwe and Honorable Nganisa a speedy recovery. Madam Premier, I must applaud the way you handle the church incident, especially how you trace contact tenuously and support prov provided to the victims. But your province remains no consequence management province with no single municipality or department with a clean audit report. Municipalities remain centers of corruption in free state. Practical example is your municipality, Mafube, where administrators were paying themselves huge salaries and double claim with no consequences. We're still waiting outcome of investigation done in Mafube by MEC Cogd up until today, even more than a year. So, Premier, when you speak of consequence management, you must start at home. 
But you have just surprised me. How we are pizza and how we are pizza. Premier pizza now again, despite Ram Karal issue. Surely this should be a strange way of fighting corruption. Your province remain one and and only province where struggle icon statues is found. Is where your province remains the one and the only where struggle icon statue is found on the mountain with monkeys under the disguise of proper view, while colonial generals are found right in the middle of town, there's nothing enticing about putting Majiba statue there in the mountains where you find monkeys. Nonetheless, we appreciate the fact that your organization is beginning to see the light. Finally, has joined the clarion call by the EFF on statues. This clarion call by the EFF shouldn't be understood within a, con a narrow context of removal of statues only, but should be a comprehensive de decolonization pro program, which will include changing province name, which must change from free state. It includes its towns and municipalities. The reason we have names such as Senegal, Marquardt, Fixbeck is because the British and Dutch colonized, colonizers brutalized our ancestors and put them to a point where our ancestors had to accept those names. He who names you premier controls you. When you go to SPCA to buy a dog, one of the acts of claiming its ownership is to give it a name. Our ancestors were given names such as Pete, Isaac, and you name them with towns such as Kuronstadt to symbolize ownership over us by those who colonized us. Names of our black township co continues to play a subservient role, while those of white suburbans uh, or towns plays a dominant role, even though black township constitute majority of populations of our areas as a whole. A road from here to Mangaung, uh, a road from here Mangaung to Zamdela will present you with a direct direction signs that direct you to Sasolbeck. You'll only meet a Zamdela signpost when you get in Zamdela. The reason even, we even forgot uh, there's such a town as Peter Marisbeck, Petersburg is because those people in Limpopo made, took a decisive decisions to remove those signposts from right at the Johannesburg uh, CBDs up until Kopolukwan. We must change everything. We must be like Lesotho. When you, when you are in Lesotho, you feel that, yeah, people who are living there are native people of uh, Africa as a continent. Madam Premier, you promise landless people of our province land. Up to this point, your promise remain a pipeline. The only way my people will get the back land is when they take charge of their lives and do what residents of Moitrai did by taking what is rightfully theirs by force. Madam Premier, you promised young people youth directorate. Even today, it remains not clear as to whether they will ever get that directorate in free state. Madam Premier, you spoke of radical economic transformation in free state, which is going to benefit young people. Your first act, when given an opportunity to do so through procuring food parcels and other PPEs for COVID-19. Most of majority of budget of free state went, were, were redirected to other provinces, not to young people who are living here in your province. So you only pay a lip service to this thing. Women, youth, and the disabled Premier remains at the receiving end of poverty. Your department in Free State Premier, led by led, mostly are led by male uh, HODs. This is a clear demonstration that you do not see a potential in women as a woman premier. There are women with proper qualification who can help you to build a, a strong state capacity in your province to an extent of getting clean audit, Madam Premier. If you do not know them, I will help to identify you in free state. You must just contact me. But I'm afraid with the current crop of HODs, you will you not succeed. Two minutes, Honorable Member, as you conclude. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, okay, uh, speaker. But another thing that I want to dwell much on it is this thing of uh, gender-based violence, Premier. Your organization has committed, you have committed, even speakers here have committed, but we must show it by, by actions, not only words. We are seated in Litsimeng with a, a mayor of the African National Congress who's a rapist, who went as far as bribing victims, who gave a victim 1,500 to drop a case. SEFF will be reopening that case. We want to see green blouses there in ensure, ensuring that justice seems to be done as far as that victim is concerned. We want to see you in action as a president of a women's league when such an incident is seen in your province where you, lead, you are leading. So we are looking up to you, uh, Premier, to act, uh, to act decisively. We'll be looking at you closely. We are going to help you to open, a, to reopen that case against that rapist mayor of the African National Congress in Litsimei. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable uh, Member. Honorable uh, Jankasin, you may now address the House. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, before I start with my speech, I just want to mention that the word racist is used very trivially in this legislature. And as I go through my speech, I challenge people to call me a racist, but not in the legislature, to do it outside the legislature where I can take them to court. Um, Honorable Miku and members of the ANC Youth League know what the outcome of that will be. And I want to thank them for the money that they sponsored towards our 2020 Future Leaders Program in the DA in the Free State this year. Speaker, I was saddened last week during Mandela Month to hear of the death of Andrew Hlangeni. I knew him as a gentleman politician and a stalwart of the fight for democracy in South Africa. As a parliamentary colleague, he was particularly kind by obtaining a signed copy of Madiba's book, Long Walk to Freedom as a Gift for My Baby Son in 2003. It was a precious gift from both him and Madiba. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because we all know that he was horrified, as are and were many other stalwarts, by what the ANC that they sacrificed so much for has become. The ANC that is characterized by allegations of state capture, institutional failure, corruption and cronyism. We heard all of this and more listening to the Zondo Commission. Furthermore, it is as clear as day out of CADA policy, affirmative action and BE are abused to legitimize and cover up this malfeasance. Surely this is not why Andrew Langeni and others stood their ground during the Ravonia Treasel trials in 1994. They didn't stand trial to see this happening to their organization, Honorable Speaker. The greatest treason today is to stand up in this legislature and talk around all the rot and in fact try to cover it up and protect the well-known perpetrators or, as we hear every day, blame history for it. We hear every day how history is blamed for the rot that is taking place in the provincial government. We will never deny, Honorable Speaker, the impacts of history on our society. But Van Rivek or did not appoint Estina or Blackhead Consulting or any of the other rotten companies involved in rotten tenders in the Free State. Speaker, the budget of the Office of the Premier remains very high compared to the legislature and other frontline service delivery departments that are under financial strain. The Office of the Premier should focus on monitoring service delivery of line departments, but has rather become a source of controversy itself. The Free State Provincial Government, like the no National Government, will have to ensure that cost-cutting measures are implemented that will allow more funds to be available for crucial service delivery. Last year, the Premier made the following commitment during a debate speech a budget debate speech, and I quote, this financial year, we will do more with less. We will not waste a cent. We will account for every cent we use to fill our people's aspirations. We will strictly adhere to cost-cutting measures, I close quote. 
the Premier and the Legislature have again failed to set an example by holding SOPA away from the fourth Ratsal this year. The single SOPA event this year jointly cost the Legislature and Office of the Premier about five million rand, just for one SOPA, Honourable Speaker. The cost-cutting measures could include an announcement to cut back on the cost of the Office of the Premier by at least 150 million rand phased in over three years. Removing expenditure on government functions, events, festivals, overseas travel and other lifestyle-related expenditure by politicians and senior management would already make some of this cost-cutting possible. Our people in the free state have yet to experience the physical, on-the-ground benefits from such trips and events. Last year, the Premier indicated that 125 million rand would be spent on community development ward workers in wards. We would like to know how this has contributed to fixing potholes, sewage flowing through the streets, and water delivery in these wards. We know that these EPWP workers are often abused for partisan and even personal reasons by politicians and senior officials on the ground. We note reports from Difla Beng and other municipalities that these appointments are linked to kickbacks, nepotism, and so-called special favours. The Office of the Premier has set a poor example with allocating and monitoring tenders. Let me give you some examples, Honourable Speaker. Quail Media Cubicle Trading was appointed without a tax certificate and with an invalid BEE certificate. In spite of not qualifying for appointment as a government service provider, the Office of the Premier paid over 33 million to this events company between July 2018 and March 2019. Total payments by the provincial government to this company that includes the Office of the Premier and other departments over time is probably close to 100 million rand. A single pledge signing tender between the Department of Education and Quail Media amounted to almost 11 million rand that included extensive price inflation. And we have the evidence of this. This department has a poor track record of spending precious resources meant to educate our children on functions with dubious businesses, such as among others, Envelo Estates. In fact, Envelo Estates require an extensive tax audit by SARS. The Department of Education also appointed unlimited travel and Mororetsi travel to book venues at a huge additional cost where they were doing this personally previously. These companies should be blacklisted for not paying over pre-COVID funds to service providers that has brought these service providers to the edge of bankruptcy. This is blatant fraud. We couldn't even find Mororetsi travel on the CIPRO website. Instead of monitoring this and reprimanding the department, showing no mercy, as the Premier said this morning, the Office of the Premier follows the example. Speaker, we are reliably informed of a syndicate running out of the Office of the Premier that is involved in various dubious tenders involving price inflation and um, kickbacks, lucrative kickbacks from various companies. We will expose more of this and name the companies involved as our research expands. Speaker, when we asked the Premier about a case of cash that she was allegedly given as a kickback. She acknowledged a meeting with the individuals involved at Frankfurt, but said she did not receive cash, but rather a case of Chinese tea. In this respect, we will seek an answer to the simple question. Why would a known tenderpreneur drive from Gauteng to the Premier's residence in Frankfurt to deliver a case of Chinese tea as a gift to her? This is highly unlikely, and I would like to request members of this House to connect the dots themselves. Even food parcels stored in the previous official residence Free State House have been abused for political purposes during COVID lockdown. Of 2,482 food parcels distributed by the Premier, she gave 1,298 to ANC politicians who included the office of the ANC Provincial Secretary, Kusatu, 
individual ANC members of the provincial legislature, individual ANC councillors, and 1,044 to other individuals who are linked to the ANC. As an afterthought, 140 were collectively given to the three opposition parties represented in the legislature. Food parcels should not be stored in the Premier's residence. There are many other government storage facilities that can be used for this. There is no consistent criteria used for the delivery of such food parcels, and it is clear that thousands of food parcels have been and continue to be abused by the ANC. The Premier's residence that is guarded by the police is now a delivery point of COVID-19 party political patronage. Speaker, we are all aware of the evils of apartheid, and we are reminded of this every day in the sittings of the legislature. But we are often surprised by the creative ways in which the ANC have taken that which was corrupt and bad before 1994 and improved on it. The 19th century French economist Fredericks commented, comments are relevant to South Africa today. You've Frederick to said the following, and I quote, yes, Honourable Jungleson. When plunder becomes a way of life for a group in society over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that authorizes it and a moral code that glorifies it. I close quote. Corruption and state capture makes people, poor people, poorer, Honourable Speaker. When driving through the streets in towns, the streets of our towns and cities, it's clear from the people begging on the street corners and sleeping on the streets that poverty does not discriminate based on race. Poverty takes away people's pride and dignity. It is real, it is destructive, it is here, and it is with us in increasing numbers. In closing, Honourable Speaker, I'd like to, to mention that Honourable Mashanini yesterday said that the opposition are grandstanding. Well, I've seen a great deal of grandstanding in this House over the past couple of days. MECs here talking about issues that they, they obviously know nothing about. Because when we travel on the ground, we see a very different story in our province. Um, if one looks at the roads, for example, the road between Stainsris and Kronstadt and the allocation of tenders there, um, 150 million was paid more than the lowest tender to said trade. Why would the department do that when the lowest tender was given another tender in another for another road and did a very good job of it? 150 million more. Perhaps the MEC must explain that and not grandstand here about various other things. The Honourable Tsu, this morning stood here grandstanding and making political speeches. While her own department is in huge distress, her workers at Palanomi do not get PPEs and are now on strike, and she's standing in the legislature making political speeches. Perhaps the reason they don't have PPEs is because the president's um, spokesperson got a lucrative multi-million rand tender to buy PPEs for the government. At the same time, the rehabilitation center at Thank the psychiatric you. complex, there are children that are hungry. There are people lying in their own excrement. Thank and you. the same MEC is grandstanding in this legislature. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable uh, Mr. Kabati, you may, you may address the House. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, the speaker, uh, for the opportunity given uh, for me to address the house. Um, okay, I just want to ensure that. Just a moment, speaker. Uh, no, thank you uh, very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, for the opportunity given uh, that I should uh, also be talking and presenting uh, in the House uh, today. Uh, speaker. 
I talk in this sitting representing the ANC to support budget vote one. The ANC supports a budget vote one, the office of the premier. We acknowledge with heavy hearts that we are a country in mourning. We continue to be shattered by the loss of many lives due to COVID-19 pandemic. We are still emotionally devastated by the loss of lives of our ambassador, Zinzi Mandela, and our Isitualande Baba Andrew Langen, who both have the roots and footprints of the, of the free state. Baba Mlangenu, who was born in the free state in Bethlehem, Comrade Zinzi Mandela, whom her footprints were not necessarily by choice, but by the act of a brutal apartheid regime that put the Mandela family under yeah. house arrest. Am I audible, Speaker? Yes, uh, Member, you are. Just that I think there is someone whose mic is not mute, so uh, you were disturbed by by their background. But you can proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Speak. Uh, so we note uh, those brutal acts uh, that were put uh, to the Mandela family under house arrest in Brantford. Some of those who perpetrated such acts are uh, a part of this house today, Speaker. They are guilty of the atrocities that were waged against the Mandela family. Marona Premier Sasimtombela, Kwenaya Madiba, let us appreciate the budget vote one, which you have uh, just presented. The ANC supports the budget vote. The ANC never expected the opposition to support this budget vote uh, like the rest uh, that they have never ever supported, ever since time in Memoria. There is no budget vote that they have ever uh, supported. They stand here to charade and grandstand and pretend to care about the lives of the struggling black majority, but they fail to show that empathy. They want to disallow the government to give services to the people by not supporting the budget, which must go and save lives at this point in time. Premier, you should not be bothered by the detractors. Just soldier on. You are doing well. To balance between saving lives and ensuring that we still salvage and protect the economy, not to go further down. Many people do not know the impact of COVID-19 could have been far worse uh, than how it is now. But through your staying leadership, uh, Premier, we are still managing that COVID-19 challenges should not be above the capacity of the Department of Health to cure and save lives. You supported all the departments and municipalities. There was a time, uh, Premier, a uh, speaker, we were, we were fearing for the Premier's life, and we tried to pressure her to rest. And she said, if it can't be us, who will it be to go out there and service our communities? The Free State uh, people see, note, and appreciate your dedication, Premier, uh, behind the closed doors, even today, at least for, for the first time. Uh, the EFF has appreciated and praised you in terms of the work that you are doing, and you are doing extremely well. And of course, we have embarked on a process to repair the damage by the pandemic, and you are gradually doing well, focusing on the following thrusts. Inclusive healthcare uh, response, provision of food uh, and shelter, provision of water and sanitation, enforcement and compliance, economic recovery plan, and the government plan. Under inclusive healthcare uh, response um, speaker, the deputy president, uh, Didi Mabuza, and the minister of health, 
Minister Zolimikis praised the Premier and the MEC of Health on how both of them are leading from the front and fighting COVID-19, how they manage uh, to give courage, hope, and comfort to those at the front line and at the cold face of the pandemic. On uh, provision of food and shelter, we appreciate the efforts of the Premier to go and lobby the private sector in order to add value to the government limited support. And we have uh, taken this opportunity. We want to take this opportunity to thank all those who continue to work with a free state government to bring necessary intervention to our vulnerable communities. It is only in the free state that intervention on temporary shelters is linked with skills development because of your wisdom, eh, Premier. On provision of water and sanitation, we saw you, Premier, marshalling the process, working together with Minister Sisulu and MEC Tembein. We wish him well and honorable member Mark. We wish them a speedy recovery. The dams are accumulating water in Guapa as we speak. The, the, the Jojo tanks were delivered. The outcry has decreased. The opposition is jealous. And Honorable Member Majake, I'm sure, can give evidence that it is better now in Kwakwa. On economic recovery, you have rightfully quoted our President, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Premier. You quoted Honorable uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa when he said, the storm is upon us. Things will get worse before they get better. And the road ahead is still long. We pride ourselves by what was presented by Emi Simaka Mohai in terms of economic recovery plan. But also highly excited by your instructions, Premier, to the MECs. You, you gave, you told all the departments not to just talk, but the deeds be more reflective than the ways, and therefore issued an instruction that each department must give you five co-ops and SMMEs that are led by women, youth, and people with disabilities, and that your office will be monitoring the growth of such. Uh, now, speaker, five women co-ops and SMMEs per department equals to 55 uh, initiatives. Five uh, youth is another 55 initiatives. Five uh, disability co-ops and SMMEs is a third 55. The total office of the Premier will be playing a monitoring role on uh, a total to uh, doing well. And she has not been leaving behind macro enterprises uh, relevant to each department. Hence, she is going to uh, have an advisory committee. Yes, Premier is dark now, but it will get better. Thank you very much, Premier, for fighting for the business of uh, the free state by giving an instruction that the provincial budget of the free state must benefit the business of the uh, the free state. On enforcement and compliance, honorable uh, members, the United Nations has acknowledged and pronounced that COVID-19 pandemic goes hand in hand with gender-based violence and femicide. Premier, we have seen you working and working uh, alongside MEC Machini to ensure that whilst government is trying by all means to ensure compliance to COVID-19 regulations, but that the police should also at the same, same time being overwhelmed as it is, be dealing with cases around um, gender-based violence and around uh, farm attacks, both uh, black and white. And Honorable Member um, Smith of um, the EFF Front should know that when the Premier says we, she speaks on behalf of all of us in the Free State. He must go and read 
the statement that was taken out by one of the uh, agricultural uh, sector leaders, Dan Creek, when he praised the premier and acknowledged and was very happy uh, that the premier was with them wearing a, a green blouse with other members of the Women's League supporting them uh, on farm uh, killings. He, he said it, and therefore it means the Premier is with everybody. Yesterday, Premier, you and MEC Machining facilitated the return of 26 children back to Lesotho, whom their ages are ranking between 15 and 17, who were illegally in our country. They are reco uh, reconnected with their families. And thank you very much, Mayor Wasichaba. You are doing well. On governance, uh, Speaker, uh, the task of the office that the office of the Premier is dealing with necessitates that the budget of the office of the Premier be re-looked into. The budget is too small, given the challenges that the office of the Premier is dealing with, including the fact that many workers in the office of the Premier are still on a contract base. So many uh, of them, as they are giving a service, uh, being on contract, it means they are not getting a remuneration package. It means they are not able to contribute on a provident fund or a pension fund. So this office deserves to be given more allocation to address such challenges. Oversight is not an easy work. The office of the Premier needs to be capacitated to play oversight on all the departments on municipalities, and also uh, on uh, COVID-19 uh, challenges. On education, uh, Premier, we are, the youth of the free state appreciate the efforts of your office to give bursaries to local and international studying uh, 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 students. And Premier, let us appreciate that you are covering all parts of the free state and all the sectors in giving a service. You have just mentioned uh, what is going to happen in Lizeme in partnership with the mining house. You have mentioned the spaza shops for youth development, which I know that some of them will be in the trust of Tabanchu and in Kwakwa. To honorable members, uh, honorable member Jankerson, he stated, he, is, he has started for me, um, uh, speaker. Honorable Member Jankerson has started to be very monotonous. He's very monotonous. He only has one thing to say, year in, year out, every day, every night, every uh, hour. The Friday the Dairy. That's the only thing that he can talk about. The Friday the Dairy uh, speaker remains a very important project that can change the balance to the positive for the black dairy farmers. That's why uh, Honorable Jackson hates uh, the project with passion. That project needs to continue. It must just be managed differently. An unrehabilitable racist, even when they can be, they can present themselves with a smile of a hyena they will remain racist, and they will remain hyenas, and they will remain uh, crocodiles. Point of order, Madam Speaker. Uh, uh, Kabate, we have ruled on the issue of, of racist, uh, referring to people as racist in the house. Can we please not report, not repeat that? Please withdraw. Uh, whom did I refer to, Speaker? Whom did I mention? Because I am talking generally that there is racism in the country. And racists will always give us hyena smiles. But they will mm. remain mm. Uh, hyenas. Whom did I mention <laughs> for me to, to be requested that I should withdraw? Okay. Honorable Member, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check the, the transcripts here. But if you mention uh, people in the house, then that will be wrong. I will check that and I will rule later. Proceed. 
thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, speaker, for Honorable Me Member Meko to pay a fine does not represent that he was wrong in his beliefs and he remained correct. I repeat, uh, issues of racism are, uh, are rising ahead even more now uh, during this uh, current time. And racism, we will always fight it, we will win over it, and we would not keep quiet on it. Uh, and if you are a racist and you behave as if you are not, then you are a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and you'll remain a jackass forever. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, the budget vote is supported. The Premier is supported to go and do her work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MSC. Honorable members, um, we are now going to have a, a reply by the Honorable Premier. Honorable, Honorable Premier, may you address the House? Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Before I start, I just want to say to Honorable Jenkinson, even one can try very hard to show that uh, we must really work together. But it seems as if there are others who are not prepared indeed to work together. There are others who are really not prepared to accept that things have changed. There are others uh, really that are not prepared to accept that uh, black people are ruling. There are others really that are not prepared that black people also want the economy of the country and they also want land. And unfortunately, speaker, black people are also part of this country and the black people are also part of the free state. They want economy. They want to change their lives. They also want land. They also want to have their own land. You know, Madam Speaker, education is a very serious thing. You know, I can say in that day, Jackson, the education that I think he had, the education that makes sure that he divides black people, and he's very good at that one. And what he is saying now, he is always saying it in parliament. He will never say it outside parliament. I don't know why Asebed is a strategy saying as a high to divide us as black people. And I'm appealing to him. All that he has said, Chinese people that gave me back kickbacks and all those things, he can go and say it outside so that I can also answer him. But I want to appeal to him. Change has come and he must accept to him. Things have changed and we can't cry forever. We want our land, we want our economy, and we are going to work to make sure that we get it. Food parcels, honorable members. I have never heard uh, the comrades uh, Jankinson to make some means for our people. The food parcel that he is talking about, though I'm having my bank food parcels, I'm having government food parcels, which Mema Miki is dealing with them in social development, but I have established bank food parcels and clothes food parcels. They are there with me because I'm meeting people every day who don't have food. And I'm also phoning them to say, I'm having some food here. If you know any person, whether from DA or from, you can come and collect and they're coming. Why don't they refuse them? Why don't they start their own food banking? Why should they always be with the red bed and just criticize anything that we are trying to do? We want to be part of the economy of the free state. We want also to be part to have the land. And we are not going to sing for long. And I think EFF is right. We must start to push and push hard about this thing. Honorable member, 
Let me go to uh, Ndate, Honorable Smith. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Smith. I could feel that, I could even see, I could even feel that you are very emotional. And I understand why you are emotional. Because where I am, I can also see also white uh, uh, people that are very poor, that are struggling. That's why I'm so, you know, touched about what you are saying. But let me tell you, the free state that we are building, it is not, that's why I'm saying let's build the free state, all of us, because I call on all of us, black and white, that we must build this free state that we want. And we are doing it for our children and our families, not for ourselves. It will never happen that white should, you know, babe bang, black should be babe bang. I mean, we are doing it for both, for our children now. We must fight, indeed, the GBV, fight for, for farm murderers, and also for farmers and workers. We must build this free state together. It is not easy, it's very tough, but we must do it together. But at least, Luna, you acknowledge, I don't want to lie. And you sometimes call and say, there are families that are struggling. Can you assist Premier? And you know that we are doing that. And you are not criticizing. Sometimes you come with, uh, you know, proposals to say, we want to meet with you. We want to do one, two, three, four, five. At least that's what we must do. We must try to build this free state, not just to criticize and kick, you know, just to talk negative things all the time, even if one is trying very hard under these circumstances. Honorable Sandra, thank you very much. And I've seen that you have read the speech. And I want to say to you, we must keep on building the free state. We must keep on assisting our people. And I know that you are doing a good job in that Sandlana. Please don't give up. Let's work and work a little bit harder for our people. Mema Miki, you have said it all. You have said it all. You have touched my heart. You have said it all. You have put it very clear. My sister, you must remember here, we are, we are fighting for power. People are fighting for power. People had power. They are saying ANC, we have ruled for 27 years, but indeed we have been oppressed for 400 years back. And ANC has been in power only for 27 years. Go and lie to our people, but our people are not stupid. They know what has been happening to them. Please stop dividing black people. In conclusion, uh, Madam, Madam Premier, Madam, uh, in conclusion, Honorable Speaker, uh, at the moment we have uh, 19,209 positive people in the free state, 19,000. While we are fighting, our people are still suffering, others don't have food. I have never heard DA saying we are going to distribute food to, to, to our people. At the moment, we have 186 people death in the free state. At least Department of Health, Memun saying they can say whatever what they want to say, but re recoveries are 6.6277. 6, I think you are trying your level best. And I also want to urge members of the public to please observe the rules against COVID-19. Please, Banaba Hesu, observe the rules against COVID. Please, I want to urge our communities to cooperate. Please cooperate. We are fighting is hunger, is poverty. I don't want to blame anybody. All that I'm saying is, what is it that we can do to, 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 to make sure that we assist you? Please, I want to urge you, our school kids, to also cooperate. I am definitely sure we shall overcome. Let's keep our social distancing. Let's put our marks on. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Premier. And uh, Honorable Members. <laughs> Honorable Members, the reply by the Honorable uh, uh, Premier concludes concludes the debate on vote one. Premier, rather Premier's office. Thank you very much. But what I want to say 
honorable members is that we are now going to take a break uh, and come back at half past one. Thank you, honorable members.
Let me see some of Ben. Thank you, Deputy Hello, Speaker. Can I get an indication? We are here, Deputy Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much, honourable members. Deputy Speaker. We are here, Deputy Speaker. Honourable members, before we proceed to motion three, I wish to remind the House that the vote of the Free State Legislature is not subjected to debate, so we are not going to debate it. Let me give over to the Secretary to read the motion three. The Honorable Speaker Mayor Zanele Sukuba shall present the budget vote of the State Legislature to the House. Over to you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Premier. Members of the Executive Council, Honorable Chief Whip, Honorable Deputy Chief Whip, Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Members, our guests who, have, who might have joined us, and all viewers on social media, I greet you this afternoon. The presentation of the Legislature's budget vote for the 2020-2021 financial year earmarks the second session of the sixth legislature of the Free State Province. The presentation of this budget vote happens during the times of challenges because it coincides with the scale of the pandemic that has befallen nations globally. The novel COVID-19 poses serious challenges to governments and institutions, compelling them to devise new means of providing social services to electorate. Let me remind honourable members that this budget presentation takes place during the month of our struggle icon and the first president of our democratic dispensation, Dr. Nelson Holitha Mandela, which of course coincides with the difficult times we face as a result of the pandemic. Honourable Deputy Speaker, despite the challenges we face, we must draw lessons from the life of this icon and remain optimistic that we shall surmount and defeat the scourge of this pandemic. I would like to quote Dr. Nelson Mandela, where he encourages that people should remain
person who were not physically at the venue could access deliberations and these events. We shall continue to hold such programs of legislature through virtual means due to COVID-19 pandemic. We wish to find space, Honorable Premier, to present to the Executive Council the resolutions taken by this youth parliament and sectoral uh, parliament uh, uh, engagements for implementation and execution. On our procedural services, Honorable Chair of Chairs um, and Honorable Deputy Speaker, the procedural services provide for a program uh, for in program three includes table services, the Hansa Directorate, the Directorate le uh, Legislation and Oversight, and the Legal Service Directorate, public participation and education. These support services deal directly with the core business of the legislature. It includes the pro production of procedural papers, the rendering of language services, and production of verbatim reports of the House and its committees, and as well as rendering legal services and public participation in the process of the legislature. The legislature continues to, rent, to, to render language services in three languages of record, which we are unable to do at this point because of the prevailing circumstances. And it might also pose as a lesson on how do we deal with this matter moving forward. It should be noted that we have taken various initiatives to ensure that the rendering of procedural services provide more vigorous support to the core of oversight and accountability to portfolio committees. On our finances, rendering of financial supply, chain management, corporate and institutional support services to the legislature is informed by our stated strategic objective to further develop and effect and efficient institution through improvement of institutional governance and policies, implementation of modern systems and technologies, as well as development of um, uh, human resources. The business objective of finance is to maintain effective financial management and effective supply chain management systems to enhance processes for sound provincial management, coordinating of, bu of budget, processing of financial information, and supply chain management contribute to the integrated planning and execution of processes required to optimize the flow of materials, information, and capital in the functions that broadly include demand, planning, sourcing, production, inventory management, and logistics, storage, and transportation. The legislature recognizes that proper management of its human resource is one key component to facilitate and enable the institution to meet its constitutional obligations, supported by Directorate of Human Resource Management. The establishment of management performance system is primary objective, is primary objective of human resources for the for the forthcoming period. Deputy Speaker, regarding rethinking our oversight mechanism, we shall have to place a service delivery as a focal point in our deliberations. Committee of the Legislature conducting oversight should devise plans congruent to the mitigating the, to mitigating the challenges of service delivery as exacerbated by the pandemic. While committees will focus on their routine oversight mechanisms, they should also comply, compile plans aimed at addressing challenges of this various of this virus on service delivery. Deputy Speaker, let me hasten to inform the honorable members that as part of our plan to strengthen oversight, we have established the Committee on Government Assurances according to the rules. This committee will fundamentally look at undertakings, promises and assurances taken on the floor of the House by members of the Executive Council and the implementation of assurances, promises and these undertakings to be monitored by this said committee. Further, terms of reference uh, of this committee will be crafted and made available. Honorable Deputy Speaker, in my previous speech in 2019-2020 financial year, speaking on importance of reorganizing, I have mentioned that we have to remind ourselves that organizations are not static and need to consider reconfiguration to mitigate challenges of the 21st century. I have said we need to remain vigilant to environmental dynamics threatening the existence of our public institutions and develop strategies to mitigate these challenges. Today, we have to reconfigure 
to mitigate the impact of social the impact and social implications of the novel pandemic this honorable deputy speaker taught me that learning and adaptation is forever continuous in responsive public institutions talking on the impact of this uh, covid-19 on governance and administrative policies in the first state honorable legislator honorable deputy speaker structural reforms do not take place in isolation but will also be informed by policy change while embracing and adapting to the new normal we have to craft our governance and administrative policies congruent to the challenges we are facing for instance we were compelled as legislative sector to conceptualize policies that would mitigate current challenges i need to inform the house that the rules and orders committee recently adopted policy on virtual meetings it is also it also adopted policy on management of the impact of COVID-19 in the workplace. Deputy Speaker, it is our aim in the first state legislature to identify priorities moving forward. Um, Honorable Deputy Speaker, on the targeted programs emanating from 2019-2020 budget vote, we would recall, Honorable Members, that the first state legislature had set, set itself programs to be completed during the 2020-2021 financial year. These programs are inclusive of the following the modernization and dictation of the fourth rasal deputy speaker i can report to this house that despite delays experienced on the modernization and dictation of the fourth rasal the free state legislature managed to secure the required technology to assist members during the business of the house the dictation of the fourth rasal is also complemented by structural structural renovations of the rasal by department of public works we hope that work would be sped up and finished or finalized rather soon. Acquisition of the legislature premises or accommodation. Honorable members, Deputy Speaker, with the support of the Department of Public Works and Treasury, the legislature will continue to embark on the process of finding office accommodation for the legislature subject to applicable legislation. The need for office accommodation was occasioned by the continued challenges experienced by members and other users of the Southern Life Plaza building over a period of time. Also, following on our recent engagements with Department of Public Works regarding accommodation for non uh, uh, for honored members not residing within the boundaries of the sitting of the legislature and are accommodated at members village we are looking forward to address all the concerns raised by honorable members in this uh, 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 on this regard on filling of the key vacant positions honorable deputy speaker it is my pleasure to announce that this uh, to this house that we have been able to fill key vacant positions in the legislature these positions were filled owing to budgetary were not filled in the past owing to budgetary constraints experienced by the legislature the filling of these positions would enable the legislature to effectively carry out its mandate and improve the levels of constitutional performance. On institutional and strategic organizational review, honorable members, as indicated in this presentation earlier, that structural arrangements in institutions cannot remain static, but should continuously be reviewed to counter challenges. We intend, through internal structural review, strengthening the following units and directorates in the legislature. Staffing of the unit supporting the Committee on Petitions, merging institutional protocol matters with security matters, because in protocol, honorable members will find that there is only one person working in that office, and sometimes that does not assist the institution. Ensuring placement of staff according to their knowledge and skill, balancing the gender ratio in our security unit, securing sufficient number of staff responsible for cleaning of offices, these changes in alignment and function, including the merging of IT and communications and marketing, will support the overall strategy of the free state legislature. On legislative matters, Honorable Deputy Speaker, we've informed the House earlier that uh, the role played by the free state legislature is in the I have informed the House earlier on on the role played by the free state legislature in the legislative sector. I need to inform honorable members on progress and pending matters emanating from the National Speakers Forum. On legislative matters, honorable there is a, a matter on memorandum of understanding and finalization of the legislative sector bill 
Honourable members, the South African legislatures are in process of becoming a uniform sector. There is also the establishment of the Central Bargaining Forum for legislatures. The Deputy Speaker has an indication that the legislatures are gravitating towards being fully placed sector. We currently signed an agreement establishing the Centralized Legislative Sector Bargaining Forum. Honourable members, the South African legislatures are in process of becoming a union. On the support, honourable members of elected establishment of the Central Bargaining Forum representative. The Deputy Speaker has an indication that the legislatures are gravitating towards being fully placed sector. We currently signed an agreement. The program two of the legislature's budget vote is allocated in its entirety to the support of elected representatives and political parties represented in the Free State Legislature. It provides for one, transfer of payments to the provision and payment of facilities to members of the legislature in line with two policy documents of the legislature, namely policy on funding of political parties represented in the legislature, policy on facilities, payments and benefits of members of the Free State Legislature, the policy on funding of political parties represented in the Free State Legislature, uh, provides for the payment of one office allocation, two research allowance, uh, three constituency allowance, and four political party funding to determine uh, according to the determined formula. Considerations has to be made for further support of political parties in order to enhance their capacity to perform oversight. And, and in this instance, the legislature will consider increasing uh, uh, the, the, the allowance of the research. The policy on facilities, payments and benefits of members of the Free State provides for provision of enabling facilities regarding accommodation and relocation of members. These services are provided by the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. Communication facilities, cellular phones and telephones, traveling facilities, subsistence allowance. What is that? The allowance of the research. The policy on facilities, payments... Coming to the budget, honourable members, honourable deputy speaker, the legislature requires a credible budget to implement its strategic objectives. The budget for the vote to, to be appropriated amounts to 264 million and, and 650... 650,000 rands is 264 million and 650,000 rands, with a further statutory amount of 25 million 424,000 rands. The total budget allocation therefore amounts to 290 million and 74,000 rands. This constitutes a 5.6 increase if one uh, uh, can compare with the previous year's allocation. Still not enough, honorable member. While I'm presenting the structure of the legislature vote based on three programs and the allocated funding of such programs, I wish to inform the legislature that the, the legislative sector is in the process of changing the budget, budget structure and programs as agreed uh, uh, by the National Speakers Forum. These changes also intend to ensure that um, the, 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 there is a more standardized way or by all legislatures and, 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 and parliament. The allocation of funding per program is as follows. On program one, administration, uh, we have allocated 153 million and 86,000 rands, honorable members. The program includes the office of the speaker, including the budget, allocations to portfolio committees, the office of the secretary to the legislature, office of the deputy secretary to the legislature, and the office of the chief financial officer. These offices oversee, oversee corporate and institutional directorates. Program two, facilities and benefits for members and political parties at 66 million 635,000 rands. Program two of the legislature's budget vote is allocated in its entirety to the support of elected representatives and political parties represented in the pre state legislature. It is provided for one, transfer payments in the form of grants, and two, the provision of payment of facilities to members of the legislature addressing their level, their travel management, communication and tools. Honorable Deputy Speaker, if one compares the allocation received from Treasury against these needs, um, 
of the legislature, the needs exceed the allocation uh, uh, by a shortfall of 5,937,000 rands. The constituency allowance increases from 39,536 to 41,433 rands per member per month. It is expected that parties will left in five minutes. Thank you, thank you, Honourable Deputy Speaker. Now I can see how it feels. It is expected that parties will be more responsive in linking the legislature and executive with the needs of our communities, which will inspire and promote political education to ensure continuous and vital links between people, organs of state, state and in particular between the people and the free state legislature. It is against this backdrop that I also wish to inform the House that the tabling of the constituency reports are expected from all political parties represented in the legislature, and that will frame processes governing tabling of constituency reports. I need to emphasize that tabling of constituency reports is not intended to encroach in party political work, but to two constituency offices determine the provision of basic public services to the people. And this includes services such as provisioning of clean water, public health, related issues and sanitation, just to mention uh, but a few honourable members. I need to emphasize that tabling of constituency reports... Honourable Deputy Speaker, I, I also deemed it important that the House should take note of national legislation, the Political Party Funding Act of 2018, which was assented during 2019 by the President. The Act states that political party fund grants are now vested with the IEC, which means that the political party fund budget will be discontinued by the legislature. Date of implementation by IEC, however, still needs to be determined. On Program 3, Honourable Members, um, that will be parliamentary services. We have allocated an amount of 44,929,000. The program includes the core procedural services to the legislature, which are hazard legislation and oversight and directorate legal services. The direct charge, the members' uh, remuneration, is budgeted at 25,424,000 rands and is aligned with the recommendations by the Commission on Remuneration, which are advised on salary structures of parliament and provincial legislation. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I must also, in conclusion, record my appreciation for the continued support of members of the legislature, their hard work, uh, in dealing with the issues uh, of the of the legislature to ensure that they conduct this oversight and ensure public participation. The leaders of political parties, deputy speaker of the legislature, the chair of chairs, the chief whip, and the deputy chief whip, and all the respective party whips, uh, honorable members. I also wish to express my appreciation towards the management of the staff of the Free State Legislature, led by the Secretary to the Legislature. I therefore request to the House, I therefore request the House to support the Legislature's budget vote presentation for the 2020-2021 financial year. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, this presentation by Honorable Speaker concludes the motion three. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Honorable Members, the Chair of Chair, the Chair of Chairs, I think, shall now take the chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry, 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 um, sorry, we haven't read the motion. Uh, uh, we haven't read the motion. I, I think I'm fresh from that. Honorable members, let us first deal with uh, the, the procedures as required. On the second and third reading of appropriation bill, for 2020. Now we proceed to motion four.
and the secretary shall read motion four. The Honorable MEC, Honorable MEC for Treasury, Honorable MEC Brown for 2020. Honorable Speaker, I move. Any discussion? None. None. Any objection? None. 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 The Honorable MEC approved. The question before the House is that the appropriation bill be for 2020 be read for the second time. I put the question. Honorable members, those in favor will say I and I will be patient because this process we, we need to ascertain that uh, everything is in order uh, i'm not going to depend on the eyes at the same time but i will seek to ask individuals will say i and i will like we did previously honorable members those in favor will say i honorable premier that uh, everything is in order. Uh, I'm not going to depend on the eyes at the same time. I, I will seek to thank you, individual. Honorable MEC Brown, like we did. I, honorable members, honorable those in favor, Deputy Speaker, I, honorable Premier, that I, everything is in order. Uh, I'm not going honorable. To Booty. Aye. Thank you. Honorable Chabalala. Honorable. Aye. Brown. Like we Honorable Chabalala. Aye. Honorable member. Honorable. Aye. Deputy Speaker. Aye. Honorable Mileleki. Aye. Honorable. Honorable Mileleki. Aye. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Chabalala. Honorable. Bulani. Aye. Honorable Muhal. Aye. Honorable Mahasu. Aye. Honorable Tiu. Honorable Neleki. Aye. Honorable Mashinini. Bulani. Aye. Honorable Koloi. Aye. Honorable Kavachi. Aye. Honorable Smith. Aye. Smith. Aye. Sure when H. 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 Smith. Honorable Khader. Honorable Mashinini. Aye. Aye. Honorable Nego. Aye. Aye. Honorable Jankoste. Aye. Honorable Smith. Aye. Okay. Those who are in favor, honored members, I said they will say aye, and those who are against will say no. So it's okay to say whatever you want to say at this point. Honorable Jankelson. Honorable Speaker, it's just a reading, so aye. Aye. Okay. We'll raise objections later. I, no, I don't. I don't want to find myself. Honorable Fanfire, no, he's, he's not here. Honorable Kakao. Members, I said they will say aye, and those who are honorable Clay, no. Clay now. So it's okay to say whatever. Um, speaker, I. Honorable, uh, honorable uh, Tuka. Honorable Speaker, it's just a reading, so aye. Aye. Okay. Up, honorable right. Peter Wayne. I, no, I, don't, I don't want to no, he's not here. Honorable Kakao. No. Honorable Honorable Majake. And Speaker, I. Honorable Tuka. No, Madam Speaker, no. Honorable 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 Sima. 
This meet Honorable Majike, Honorable Members, the eyes no, have no been um, the Secretary Honorable Honorable members, the ayes have it. The motion is approved. The secretary shall read the bill for the second time. When does the honorable MEC propose the committee stage to be taken? I propose that the committee stage be taken now, honorable speaker. Thank you, honorable MEC. The chairperson of committees shall now take the chair. The Secretary shall read the bill for the second time. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, the House is in the committee stage. Uh, rule 172 of the Standing Rules and Orders. I wish to remind the House of the provisions of the Standing Rules and Orders when the House is in committee stage. I wish to put the vote and the schedule of the bill, much, uh, then clauses and the short title. Uh, the house is in the also, committee. in the event honorable members want to register their declaration on the vote of the appropriation bill, they must do so in terms of the rule 174 of the standing rules and orders. I, wish to I now put vote, vote one to vote five. Then Any discussion? And the short title. None. 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 I see there's a hand of Honorable uh, D. Smith. I now put Honorable Smith, can you express your view? Uh, Chairperson, can you note the uh, objection of the Freedom Front Plus to vote 1, 3, and 5, please? Thank you. Uh, noted, Honorable Peter Way. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, the DA objected 4 and 5 with the following reasons. Both one, Office of the Premier, the DA objects to the excessive amount of money allocated to the Office of the Premier. Specifically, when considering that the Premier's office does not fulfill a core service. Furthermore, the provincial bursary program and community development yeah, workers yeah, continues to not deliver the component in the Premier's are clearly bloated. Vote three, the Department of Education, Economic, Small Business, Development, Tourism and Environmental Affairs. The DA objects on the ground of poor spending of conditional grants. There is no return on investment for a special economic zone. The department fails to functions and that it's not to attract investors and create an environment for economic growth and opportunities. Vote for Treasury. The DA objects on the grounds that this department continues to display poor financial management principles. Furthermore, this department has failed to lead by example, as evidenced by the poor department, and continues to appropriate funds that does not deliver for municipal. Can you pause the on mute? MBC Tulana, can you be on mute? Zama, mute. Emissible on three, the Department of Education, Economic, Small Business, Emissible Tourism and Environmental Affairs. The DA objects on the ground. Thank you. Um, this department has failed to lead by example, as evidenced by poor project management throughout the provincial departments, to the office of the Premier, which doesn't against. While this department talks stuff on corruption and financial malfeasance, there has so been no, no consequent management. Vote 5, Department of Health. The DA objects on the ground that the department is not taking responsibility for project management. 
which cost the department money. It is further clear by the very high payment of legal costs that the department neglects to make provision for legal costs in their budget, and which has a serious effect on the expenditure of the budget. To further exaggerate to the point of poor financial planning and reporting, the department will not receive their two million in flight. It appears that this will lead to an unfunded budget. Thank you. Okay, noted. Honorable Majage. Thank you, Chair. Chair. Uh, uh, I will just say narrow issues. We are not supporting vote one, three, four, and five. So can we, it be registered like that, that we object and we don't support one? Thank you, Chair. Okay, noted. Thank you. Uh, approved. Honorable members, I now put to vote 10. None. 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 Any objection? None. 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 The GI objects. Um, None. I, okay, I, can I, I speak? I have no plan to have uh, Honorable Peter Way uh, just in the previous vote. Once your hand is lifted, I have noticed. Uh, it will be yourself, followed by Honorable uh, Smith, D. Uh, for now, these are the only two hands that are objecting. Now, I'll start with Honorable Peter Way. Oh, of course, Honorable Majaji. Noted. You may begin, Honorable Peter Way. Thank you, Honorable. Um, objects to vote 6 to 10 on the following grounds, Department of Education. Again, the DA objects on the ground that the department continues to incur financial implications due to poor project management and that additional money should be appropriated and made available to the department to properly vote. It appears that this will lead to an unfunded budget. Vote 7, Department of Social Development. The DA objects on the grounds of poor management of non-governmental organizations and payments made to them. The, this department has also exhibited poor expenditure of grants due to poor project management. Vote A, Department of Cooperative Government. The DA objects on the ground that grants that the excessive amounts of money are appropriated to district municipalities who boast an exorbitant salary bill. These municipalities in terms of service delivery. Vote 9, Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. The DA objects on the ground that the slow payment of accounts has a dire effect on the cash flow of municipalities. This is the project management with no to, little to no consequence management. Due to the accruals and underfunding of this vote, it appears that this will also lead to an unfunded budget. Vote 10, Department of Police, Roads and Transport. The DA objects okay, on the grounds that the department has shown poor contract management, which leads to no value for money. Due to the accruals and underfunding of this vote, it appears that this will lead to an unfunded budget. Thank you. Honorable. <laughs> We are not supporting vote one. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, please note the objection of the Freedom Front Plus to vote six, vote seven. Thank you, Chair. Uh, noted. Uh, Honorable Majage. Honorable Majage. Okay, noted. Uh, I, will, I will still know issues. We, we don't support and we reject the uh, vote agreed. Thank you, uh, Chair of Chess. Uh, it is noted, uh, uh, approved. Honorable members, I now put Honorable vote members, 11 I to vote 13. <laughs> Any discussion? No. 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 Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Jackson, does anyone want to speak? No. No. Honorable Jackson. Yes. No. Yes. yes. Honorable no. Chair, could you no. perhaps? Could you perhaps just check the rules because one once one declares um, in the declarations, normally we hand papers to the to the table, which is I think in terms of the rules. But since we can't do it here, I think members have to read it for unsigned purposes. Could you just check, please? No, that is not a, a substantial uh, 
uh, challenge honorable yeah. member they can still forward them for as long as on answered they have declared their stance on the matter as to whether they object or not in actual fact even in the normal city at Ratsan, we normally know without even necessarily affording members to to read through their objections so even in this particular circumstance there won't be a necessity for them to read them through. So we will proceed as we are doing. Uh, can I now, honorable members, oh, of course, uh, uh, check a possibility of any objection on vote 11 to vote 13? Is there any objection? No objection. None. 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 Honourable members, can you explain yourself? And that is the uh, it, it is the presiding right? officer that will, 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 will detect as to whether there is any or not. Uh, Honourable Peter, well, let me start with you uh, once more. You can address the House. Thank you, Honourable Chair. The DA objects to vote 11, 12 and 13 on the following grounds. Vote 11, Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. The DA objects on the grounds that poor project management resulted in the loss of large sums of money. The department has shown little to inspire confidence that there will be any consequence management. The DA objects that there has been an additional allocation of 20 million rands towards the Freda Dairy Project and that not enough resources has been allocated towards disaster management, such as drought relief. By 12, Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, the DA objects on the grounds of poor management, poor project management, which resulted in huge financial losses for this department. Again, there has been no consequence management taking place. The DA objects on the grounds that two million has been allocated towards the construction of a statue, whereas this money could have been allocated towards education and health. By 13, Department of Human Settlement, the DA objects on the grounds that the department surrendered 118 million back to National Treasury without any consequence management for poor contract management, which is also which also has a direct impact on this current budget. I thank you. Uh, it's noted, Honorable Peter Way, Honorable Smith, G. Smith. Thank you, Chairperson. Please note the objection uh, okay, from the Freedom, Freedom Front Plus to vote 11, 12, and 13. Thank you, Chair. Noted, Honorable Member. Uh, Honorable Machake. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, once more, we have no issues. We objected to vote 11, and 12, and 13. Thank you, Chair. Uh, noted, Honorable Member. Uh, the vote is approved. Vote I now put plus one the definitions. Any discussion? No discussion. None. 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 Okay. Any objections? None. No objections. None. 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 All right. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, I note the end of the Honourable Peter Wayne. Uh, the floor is yours, Honourable Member. Uh, I'm sorry, Honourable Chair, my hand was still up from the previous round. I will lower my hand. Okay. Uh, okay. Appropriation. Any discussion? No, uh, no, no, Converse in private. Thank you, you Yeah, no, no, no. Converse in private, there. Uh, you are disturbing the proceedings. None. None. None, Chair. That's the thing that you're saying. Can you be on mute, please? Six, 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 six. Honorable Lucima Pena. Noted. Chair, Chair. Just, just a minute, Honorable uh, Majake. 
Honorable Mapena, can you be, can you be on mute? Thank you. I'm sorry, Chair. Honorable Majage, on, on which point are you rising on? The same one that you are handling, Chair of Chairs. Uh, even though you have called the Honorable Deputy Speaker to mute her mic, I don't take kindly the remarks she has made there. To go through uh, our system. Now, we were on, on plus one on the definition. Honorable Chair. Honorable Peter Way, what are you rising on? I'm just asking you to please also ask the MEC Kwabate to mute because we don't want to hear how she's people at the back there. I haven't noticed any audience uh, from uh, the side of the MEC. It's okay. If that has happened, he, he from me. What's uh, uh, Honorable Kabati, now you are justifying what she has just said. Can you give us a please? Please. No, Ben. Please. Please. No, ben. Honorable members, uh, in fact, we were on plus two on the appropriation. We have, we have already moved from the discussion. I was about to check whether is there any objection on this particular clause. Is there any objection? No objection. None. No objection. Approve you once more. I put clause three. Yeah, short title. Thank Any you, discussion? Mr. Chair, the DI objects to vote 11. None. 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 Any objection? None. Vote 11, the None. Objections. None. Objections. None. Development, the DI objects. I therefore put project management uh, the, the schedule. Any discussion? The department has shown no discussions. No discussions. Uh, that there will be uh, any consequence uh, management. Uh, the DI objects that there has been an additional allocation of. When does the Honorable uh, MEC propose? The Spreader Dairy Project and that not enough. Honorable Chair of Chairs. MEC proposed. Honorable Chair of Chairs, I propose that the House be informed that the Committee of the Whole House has approved the bill without any amendments. Any discussions? Which resulted in huge no discussions. No, no discussions. No. 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 There has been no consequences. No. 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 Yes. No. Okay. I note the hand of Honorable Peter Way. Honorable Peter Way. Thank you, the Honorable Chair. Um, I wish to place it on record that the DA objects on the grounds that the adjustment appropriation bill for the 2020-21 financial year table by the MEC of Finance fails travel for the de delivery of services in the free state, where such services are already falling by the wayside due to mismanagement, corruption, and ineffective man monitoring and evaluation. The free state continues to lose funding under Additional grants as a result of this, and there seems to be no commitment by the provincial government to ensure that grants are spent optimally. The DA also is also concerned that the Office of the Premier, year on year, continues to receive additional funding whilst not providing a core service. The DA further noticed the objection on the grounds that the Free State is not receiving any new money. No extra money is being made available for either drought or disaster management. The funds are reprioritized and grants that are rolled over and forwarded sent back to National Treasury as a result of poor financial and project management, which caused the poor service delivery experienced by the residents of the Free State. The Free State receives less conditional grants due to poor spending and poor project management. Throughout all the departments, there was no consequence management. While nothing is, and is usual for the residents of the Free State, the adjustment budget is nothing more than a business as usual budget. The DA will forward <coughs> these declarations to the to the secretary. I thank you. I noted Honorable Pitaway, Honorable Smith. You are also noted Honorable Majaki. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, once again, please note the objection from the Freedom Front Plus to this appropriation bill. Thank you, Chair. Noted. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members. Honorable Majaki. 
Thanks once more, Chair. We, we are objected to adjustment budget. Okay, noted, Honorable Member. Uh, it is approved. I will report to the House that the bill has been approved without amendment. Uh, the Speaker shall now take the chair. I'm sorry, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs. Um, the Honorable Chairperson of com Committees may report to the House on proceedings during the committee stage. Honorable Speaker, I wish to report to the House that the Committee of the whole House has approved the bill without amendment. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Shares. The question, Honorable Members, before the House is that the bill be read for the third time. I put the question, those in favor will say aye, and those against will say no. Can I get the eyes? Honorable members, I'm, I'm serious. I'm counting these voices. shall read the bill the for the third time. Thank you, Dr. Um, Machaka. Honorable members, that brings us that brings us to the end of the business of the House today. To the, uh, the House shall adjourn until further notice.
we hope and pray that when we meet, we are going to meet the usual way. We are aware, honorable members, of the shortcomings. We are aware of the fact that some or somehow uh, there are things that cannot be done in the House that are usually done, like expressing yourself so that you can emphasize your points when you debate and have your, the, your, your electorate out there uh, uh, understand or hear you. We were unable to do that. Um, we, we had to do it this way because of the prevailing circumstances, and we want to apologize uh, once more uh, for, for doing things that way. Honorable members, this house is thank adjourned. You, I thank you. Um, yeah, bo, thank you. Thank you, Speaker. 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 Thank you, I'm <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>